Weight Cross coverage of OHSAA Wrestling, made possible by SWOCA, the Southwest Ohio Wrestling Coaches Association. Klein Residential. Jeff Burkhoff, Old Coaches Association. Mark Flone of La Rosa's Cold Spring, Kentucky. Steve Burke, Friends of Operation Giveback. Kent Smith from State Farm. And Dr. Stephen Daly. to the 2023 edition of the Ohio Wrestling Championships at the Shot Scene Center in Columbus, Ohio. I am Jerry Tischler. I am with Luke Carraher and Don Jones, and we'll be your announcers throughout the, the final series here. Right now, we have the Tournament of Champions, the Parade of Champions coming through, right? As you see, Division I, uh, champions are lining up as well as Division Two and Division Three. They're momentarily going to be introduced and I believe shaking hands and then uh, headed back to the to the bullpen to prepare for their individual matches. Yeah, pretty exciting seeing the, the girls here with the, the boys, you know. Really exciting. Attendance looks good, right? All these wrestlers been training most of their life and specifically this uh, this season to get to this this moment. So excited, happy for them. Yeah, I actually believe this is my first time witnessing the Parade of Champions. As often as I've come up to the Ohio State uh, Wrestling Tournament, Ladies this is the first time I've witnessed the, the Parade of Champions in person. So pretty impressive. Stand and remove your hats for the presentation of the colors and our national anthem. The colors are presented today by the Central State University Army ROTC Marauder, Marauder Battalion under the direction of Master Sergeant John May. Oh. 
making her 27th appearance at the state wrestling finals, Diane Stapleton Robinson retired after teaching English for 35 years at Fairfield High School in Fairfield, Ohio. She began performing the national anthem professionally in 1971 with the U.S. Air Force Band at the Grand American Trap Shoot in Vandalia, Ohio. She has sung at the International Coca-Cola Collectors Club and numerous athletic events throughout the state since 1988. But the state wrestling tournament is one of her favorites, singing with 16,000 members of the Ohio High School wrestling family. Join me in memory of Coach Bob Hooven and Coach Ron Masonic. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the Sonic, uh, who had passed away uh, this past Ladies year. Ladies and gentlemen, in actuality, we have four state tournament finals. We would like to acknowledge and honor each separately. Wrestling on mat four are the Division Three wrestlers. Will the Division Three finalists please shake hands with their opponents? Here's your Division Three state finalists. On Phoenix, mat three, we have assembled the competitors in Division Two. Will the Division Two wrestlers please shake hands with their opponents? Division Two coming out to shake hands. The championships in Division One will be decided on mat number two. Will the Division One wrestlers please shake hands with their opponent? It's division One, the large school division. And for the very first time in this arena, the girls wrestling for an OHSAA state championship. Here we go. For the, the girls, the females. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, here are all of the 2023 Ohio State Championship finalists. As we prepare for the finals matches, all 106 pound boy wrestlers and the 100 pound girl finalists should report to the bullpen while others return to the warm up area. And now, please direct your attention above to the overhead center video screen. A little bit of electric in here. Feels good. Feels good, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely uh, fun and exciting to be here. Now they got the tournament video that they're going to be playing here on the overhead projector.
uh, right now we are at the Schoenstein Center. Uh, I'm Jerry Tischler in the middle. Uh, to my Should've left, left. <laughs> is Luke Gerher. I was looking at the, the camera here. And on my right, we have Don Jones. So we're your host tonight, announcing the finals. And what an exciting finals we think it's going to be. Yeah, we're excited too. We have uh, Southwest Ohio. We have three finalists, Division One in the finals. So excited to watch them tonight. Right? That's right. It's Absolutely. Along uh, with them, we have a, a few girls making yeah. their inaugural Luke, debut here at the state tournament. You by chance have a rundown on any of the team scores? Or team you scores. Chance to take a look at that? Well, I know St. Edwards is running away with Division One at this point. They have six in the finals here that we'll be seeing. I'm guessing St. Paris Graham is probably running away with Division Two. Yeah, I think that's a safe bet. And I think we got Legacy Christian uh, in Division Three. Yep. And in the league. girls' division, we have Harrison High School. And guys, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ed St. Paris Graham and Legacy won it last year. So, ah, uh, really? Uh, they're all in the running to to win it again this year if all things hold up. And actually, uh, Harrison won the girls' division last year. That's right. So we could have, uh, I wonder if that's ever been done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Saint, piece, right? St. Edwards has it all locked up. It's uh, 187 and a half points. Perrysburg is in the second with 135. Brexville with 116. Maslin Perry, 103. And fourth, Wadsworth with 91 and fifth. Dublin Kaufman, six with 64 points. Seventh is Bowling Tangy Liberty with 62 points, followed by Springboro in eighth with 58, and LaSalle in 50, 56 points in ninth, and Nordonia with 49 points, rounding out the top 10 in Division One. You know, talk about St. Ed's. To have that many in the finals is pretty incredible. You know, they, they've they uh, been a stronghold on Division One for years. Well, I think they came in here. They... Uh, in sectional tournament, they won every they won every weight class in their sectional, all but one by pin. Uh, districts, they qualified all 14 wrestlers for the state tournament. I'm not sure how many district champions they had, but it was probably more than half. And then, obviously, at the state meet here, um, they have six in the finals. So obviously they have numerous places prior to the finals here throughout the, the three-day tournament. From Delta, sophomore Adam Matten. Here Coming we go up. as we get things started here at 106 pounds in Division One For the boys, we have Ethan Teamer of Lakewood St. Edwards, a sophomore, wrestling up against Rylan Seacrest of Rexville Broadview Heights, who is a freshman. So tomorrow, uh, Ethan Timar, Comes in with a 41 and 4 record, and Brian Seacrest from Brexville comes in with a 40 and 6 record. So it should be a should be a great match. We talked about St. Ed's, but Brexville certainly had a strong has a strong tradition of, of very very good wrestling as well. So absolutely, I, I believe they qualified 10 for the state tournament. Um, you know, possible contention to be the um, proverbial. We'll see how that plays out. To the state meet, uh, they wound up winning the national title that particular year. I believe it was maybe 2008. Yeah, they're always up there against Blair Academy, you know. And Trying right. to win that mythical national championship. And with that, with those 14, I know they have lost a starter previously this year due to injury. It was in the lineup, so it basically was next in line. And in a room like St. Edwards, you know, you got a lot of a lot of talent in that room. The next guy up is very well could be in the state finals. I actually think I believe that was. I could be wrong. The 215 pounder and the uh, wrestler that stepped in for him wound up uh, winning sectional and winning districts, I believe, qualifying for state. So we wait for the Division One match to begin. The other 
two divisions in the boys and the women's championship match has already begun. Yeah, and we talk about St. Ed's. I know there's uh, wrestlers who never made the lineup end up going wrestling in college and being very right. successful. Yeah. yeah, they had some crazy streak as far as all Americans in the NCAAs. I think it continues. I don't know where they're at, but I know they have Bryce Andonian currently wrestling. He was an All-American last year. Yeah, I was at Big Tens, and you heard the, you know, St. Ed's name quite a bit. Yeah, the guys Great. participating. I know that there was, there was a, a multiple state champion, Patty, uh, who wrestles for Ohio State. Yeah, yeah Gallagher. Patty Gallagher. I believe he um, qualified. Qualified for the uh, NCAA did, tournament, yeah. placing in the, in the Big Ten. All right, so we getting get things going here with Teamer of St. Edwards and Seacrest of Rexville. Kind of surprised there. I saw Brexville's hands in the face on the St. Edwards wrestler and nothing was called. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, you know, obviously it's illegal to have a hand to the face uh, the dang or poking them in the eye. Um, you, you can tap them on the forehead. That is, that is legal or grab the back of the head. But any hand to the face is typically a one-point penalty. He's a little bit close there on, <laughs> on that hand to the face also. Ooh. But Brexville in on a shot and trying to finish, goes out of bounds, and no change, both are neutral. Smart rap, mat wrestling by uh, Teamer there, knowing where he's at on the mat. Good mat awareness for the sophomore. So Ryland Seacrest is in the, um, the yellow singlet, and Ethan Timar is in the, the dark, dark black, or it might even be dark green singlet. Probably won't be the last time I say it, but the, they're big 106 pounders. Look at those guys. Yeah, they sure yeah. are. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like uh, a little bit of a head hit here. Uh, not really a head butt per se, more accidental. Starts a bloody nose, so let's give it a little bit of time here to, to get the, the nosebleed stopped. So we're literally um, not very far into the and we have a for our, for our fans at home. Yeah, so it's interesting to me, you know, Brexville out of Cleveland and St. Edwards also out of Cleveland uh, neighborhood, Lakewood. Um, and these two are not in the same district, which always kind of, you know, I wonder about that because a lot of times if they're in the same city, you're probably going to be at the same district. So right. if they get the choice. Yeah, yeah good I'm not question. Sure good question. But I would imagine these two have seen each other before growing up in the kids' programs up there in Cleveland, I'm sure. Right. One is a uh, district in uh, Brixville, Broadville Heights out of the uh, Hoover district area. And we hear a little bit of cheering in the background. That was for the, the girls, I believe, 100-pound championship match. The McKenna Craft of Jackson finishing off an undefeated season. Obviously, a couple of her fans are here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> And she may be one of the top girls in the in the country at 100 pounds. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, Seacrest being a uh, freshman, he'll have a chance to be, if he wins it today, you know, being a four-time state champ. So always fun to see these uh, younger wrestlers in the finals. So the way the state format works is, you know, one complete weight class. The finals will be completed across all four divisions, division one, two, three, and then the girls division. They all have to finish before moving on to the next uh, weight class. So hence, if you have stoppage in one, it kind of stops, essentially stops the whole tournament, quite frankly. But they're back in action now. Uh, both wrestlers kind of, you know, feeling each other out, playing a little chess game here. Yeah, 
we're still here in the first period, 34 seconds left. I think there were some technical difficulties with one of the computer systems, uh, but we're scoreless, 0-0. Both these guys well coached by two perennial powers out of Cleveland. I see Chris shooting it out of bounds. Shooting Ethan tomorrow out of bounds. There you go again. Does a head snap into a follow-up shot. And on a single, but out of bounds to no avail. Yeah, I like seeing these two guys, though. You know, they're going after it. They're not hesitant. They're taking shots. They're not being conservative. You see a lot of times in the finals, guys are a little scared to make that first mistake. These guys are going after it and taking shots. So again, you hear the crowd. That was for the Division II state champion who just pinned in the finals. Uh, young wrestler from Copley. That school kind of bounces around between Division Two and Three. I know they were Division One. I'm sorry, Division One and Two. They were Division One a few years ago. I believe that's Sharon Copley, which is in the uh, suburbs of Cleveland area. Yep. Yeah, he jumped in the stands there to hug some family members. He's really excited. Happy for him. Looks like now they're just. In order to stop the nosebleed, uh, they're just wrapping his whole face, <laughs> wrapping his, uh, wrapping his whole nose here. How's that nosebleed work? I mean, they you get so much medical, medical time. Yeah, you get f uh, five minutes blood time, right. and once you've um, exceeded that, you default. Uh, but typically, you have uh, blood time is just to get the bleeding stopped, and then the clock stops, and they have what's called cleanup time, which is. Uh, Indefinite. There is no limit to clean up time. You just want to make sure you know both wrestlers are clean and there's no no blood on either of them or the or the mat or their uniforms. So, so red defers and green chooses bottom. That is St. Edwards choosing bottom, and he's going to go ahead and kick him out and go neutral. A bit of an interesting strategy uh, since there was no takedown. Yeah. In the first period, so. Yeah, if this match were to go to overtime, you know that first point can be pretty critical. Right. That actually the first point scores, if this goes to the ride or die, uh, ultimate tie break of of the match, then which a lot of these matches I'm guessing will, um, the person, the wrestler that scored the first points in the match gets his choice of either top or bottom. Obviously, if you're bottom, you have to get out to win the match. And for 30 seconds, and for if you're on top, you got to hold the man down for 30 seconds to win the match. Yeah, and that just shows me that Brexville's coaches are pretty confident in their guy that he's going get to the, get the job done because they're not going to worry about going to overtime. He's going to take care of business here in regulation. Right here, though, hanging in on that single, uh, trying to work up. A bit of a scramble going on now. Um, you see both wrestlers kind of look tangled up. Yeah, we get to see what kind of funk these guys yeah. have. And like a couple of snakes in the snake pit. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that masked man? Zorro. Right. It's got to be see. difficult to breathe with that oh, thing that, on. I was sitting there wondering, wondering that myself. <laughs> see if that plays a part here with his uh, endurance later in the match, not being able to breathe out of his nose. St. Ed's there gets called for stalling. So Riley keeps trying to work that uh, single leg. Ethan Tamar from St. Ed's countering with the double under hooks, front headlock. We have about 25 seconds left in the second period. So again, a lot of times at the state title in the in the finals, it's, it's oh, not nice unusual. Shot. Oh, nice, nice almost a takedown, but no control. Scrambling. Oh yeah, he's the two. Right, got the takedown. San Edwards with the takedown. Takes a 3-0 lead, and we're about to head into the third period. Ethan Teamer, San Edwards, the critical takedown there at the end of the period. There's a replay of that takedown. 
he picked that timing just right. Yeah, as a coach, you want to see that, you know, keep wrestling until end of the period and got that takedown near the end, which was awesome. Yeah, you can't relax at the end of the period. Marilyn Seacrest now desperately needs to get out, get his escape, and start working on getting his own takedown. He's got one there, so we're going to be neutral, three to one. He's calling for injury time. Not sure what happened there on the break. He separated. Yeah, they're banging pretty good there. Yeah, he kicks away. How did, team, how did Teamer do last year? He's a, he's a sophomore. You know, he doesn't have any credentials. I'm guessing he was behind, you know, one of their other yep. hammers that they have at St. Edwards. Yep. Looks like they had Adam Butler, who's a, who was a returning runner-up at 106 pounds a year ago. He was up a couple weight classes this year. He wrestled um, at 120 pounds. I believe he got fifth or sixth, but I'm, I'm guessing he was behind him. Well, I know St. Ed's has a second team that travels just like the varsity team and gets as many matches in, so. Yeah, that's um, gotta be nice. They have that kind of talent in your room. And like we said earlier, you know, one guy goes down and it's next in line, just past the baton. Yeah, I believe at the All Catholic Invitational, uh, which is you know, all the private Catholic schools across Ohio. Um, oh, he's got a deep. Oh, there we go. Front headlock goes right into it. Ties it up three to three. I believe St. Ed's won that tournament with their, their B team. Did they? I, th yeah. I know Walsh Jesuit was there too, and they were pretty tough. Now Teamer with a Merkel, going to try to stretch him out here. He's got two, takes the lead, and they're out of bounds. Awesome wrestling, awesome wrestling there. Here's a replay. Seacrest still grimacing on his face. I'm not sure if he's having some pain somewhere. And about a minute left in the match with Ethan Teamer of St. Ed's on top, five to three at the moment. Both wrestlers going after it. They realize they don't want to leave anything on the board. Oh, back. nice switch changeover. Got to get his hips over. There's two. Crowd wants the two. I don't know if he's going to get it. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. No points. No change there. Nope. Teamer stays in control. Good hip, hip action. That was smart on the referee's part yeah, not to job. give uh, points yeah. too quick here before, you know, um, the position's established. Yeah, in high school you have that, you have the reaction time. Team are throwing in the crossbody. You know, probably looking to try to ride this match out. Stay on top. I'd imagine they're gonna stop that potentially dangerous with the knee locked in there. Got about 28 seconds left in the third period. Tight waist for ankle. Riding tough. See, Chris has got good hips. I mean, he's, he keeps keeps bouncing around and almost flipping over on top. Yeah, he pressures back and looks like he's trying to go for like a Gramby roll of some sort. And I'm hoping Teamer's thinking, hey, I can give up one, not two. Exactly. Yeah, for the last 15 seconds here. There's another roll. Oh, he's coming out the back. scrambling. Oh. Let's see if he can step over. No, he's got his legs, though. He's not going to be able to get it. I don't know. He's going to run out of time. Uh. Ethan Teamer, your champion at 106 pounds for St. Edwards. Crowd wanted two there, but there was I don't see any control. Yeah, there was too much going back and forth still. Yeah, he had his leg. So our first St. Ed's champion, well, you said they had six in the finals, so. They do. They have six. I think they have another one coming up right away. We're going to see Kayon McKinney from Elyria versus 
Carson Brown of St. Edward's, a freshman. Here, Wester. That's right. That's the girls division. The top pounds. We have a local Harrison, Chloe Deer Wester, two time state champion. Undefeated From record. West Holmes, senior Mason Taylor. Chloe Deer Wester comes in undefeated, uh, sitting at 37 senior. and 0. Again, two time state champion. Uh, she's going against Nakara Johnson of Sandusky, who's a freshman From who comes in at now 34 and 3. I'd imagine Deer Wester is a pretty heavy Lincoln favorite in this bout. Yeah, I would think so. But we'll see. You know, we talk about Chloe. She Amanda found a lot of success wrestling the boys over the years as well. So She did. She was very close to qualifying for the boys' state tournament a year ago. Big roar from the crowd. Dear Wester with her, I believe her dad in the corner. Yep, he is. That's got to be pretty cool for him. She's got an interesting style. A lot of times um, she'll let the opponent shoot in on her, and then she'll do what's called a, what I call a chin, chin rip, then step over. But um, you have to be careful when you hit that so that you don't actually rip the chin. Chloe's got some heavy, uh, heavy hands. You know, heavy hands talking about, you know, pushing down on the opponent's head, trying to wear them out. Over the course of a six-minute match, it does work. It does work. Oh, she's going she for a head and arm. Head and arm. See if she can sit it through. Oh, got she, it. She did sit it through. Now she can lift the head. She would probably get the pin. Not sure if they called the takedown yet. There's. There's two. Yeah, I don't think she got any back points nope, awarded. did not. So obviously, I guess they did not see control. Um, you have to get control first to get, get the takedown. And this looks like this is going to be trouble she right here. Deep half. There oh, go. there it is. And she gets the pin. Pin in 58 seconds. State champion. Three times state champion. Keeps a 38 you know, record perfect. Yep, her dad in the corner with Coach Baird. Show that again, just strictly a near side half, powering it over. And you put all your weight on your chest and pull the arm and the um, elbows out, and it takes away any any fight, any ability to fight. That's yeah. awesome. Nothing against Nakira Johnson, you know, she's only a freshman coming in here, and Deer Wester's got quite a resume. So I know she's upset, but she's going to have a few more years to get her title. Now we're going to switch over to Matt 2, follow the Division 1 finals. So in Matt 2 here, we have uh, Kaylin McKinney of Illyria and that Carson Brown of uh, St. Edwards. It's actually in the looks like we're trying to see what color. So this is our second St. Ed's guy in yeah. the finals. These two met a week ago as well, Kayon winning uh, the district. So right now we have a 0-0 score, second period. See them, Edwards in the uh, dark green singlet. Leary in the black and red. You know, we talked about iron sharpens iron. I'm sure the 106 pounder and this 113 pounder train they may be training partners, making each other better better throughout the season. Oh, for sure. You know, St. Edwards, another thing we, we didn't discuss, uh, I believe that they had 14 state qualifiers, and I don't think they had any seniors in that lineup. Pretty incredible. Wow. So this team will be back next year, quite possibly stronger than they were even this year, if you can imagine that. It's got to be scary for the rest of the state. 
So McKinney hanging in there, not letting uh, not letting Carson Brown get the escape. These two met last week. Oh, reversal. Brown takes a 3-0 lead on McKinney. They met last week in the district finals with McKinney actually uh, victorious in that meeting. And right now, Carson Brown is on top, 3-zip. And he's got a leg right in. Keeping the wrestler flat on the mat, and he called an illegal hold. I wasn't really Did he call sure. Nelson? Didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah, I'm thinking it had to be a full Nelson. So, you know, it looks like the St. Ed's coaches did their homework from their last meeting, made some adjustments here. He's got a 3-1 lead with the penalty point given up there. In on the leg with 15 seconds left here in the second period. Here, McKinney, just get one here. Score right, some points here. I think just push off, and back off, get his one. Nothing. Takes it to the third period, and right now, St. Edwards leading three to one. Going in the third period. You look at some of these programs, you know, you have one or two guys that qualify for the state tournament. You know, maybe they're the superstars on the team. You look at St. Ed's and they're all superstars. You know, it's pretty <laughs> incredible. So. Oh, nice, nice tilt. He's got to watch his own back. You always hear the crowd get pretty loud when uh, St. Edward's wrestler is in trouble or losing. The wrestler has uh, Carson Brown on his back, but I'm not sure if the referee can any near fall points. I'm not sure, Jerry, can you, who's in control right now? Who's the top wrestler? <laughs> Cause I was trying to figure that out. It was just like a, or like a pretzel. spaghetti noodles in there. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out which one, I, I believe, McKinney's McKinney. on top, correct? He's yeah. looking for a, a, right. for a tilt. He's looking for a tilt. A little bit of a dangerous tilt because you look at his own back and he's and there should have been. He should have been counting there. He broke criteria. Right. Sure 45 look, degrees. Sure and he was like there it. for being the top wrestler. You know, they should start counting. Oh, they okay. did. They, they awarded it. three. But they gave it to Green. They gave it to the wrong guy. Yeah. They gave it to Ed, but it should be for McKinney. I agree. Crowd is not like that. I'm sorry. I'm confused here. Yeah, now. I am also confused. Wasn't, wasn't Ed's on bottom? And McKinney was working the tilt, and they gave three to St. Edwards. So that is wow. correct. It's the one. So I guess they're calling it a reversal and two back, or a reversal two. Well, it was three it to was one. It was three to one. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened there. I thought McKinney was on top. Nevertheless. I thought he was also, yeah. Yeah, Brown's up six to one now. Crowd's not pleased with that call. He's not going to make any friends here. He's not going to win any popularity contest today. No, McKinney's in a bit of trouble with 50, 45 seconds left in the match. Right, he's going to have to get a turn if he's going to hope to pull this out. He needs to pull a rabbit out of his hat, get a five point move. About 30 seconds now left. Now he's got stalling on green. Stalling on St. Edwards. McKinney comes to his feet, hits a quick switch. Trying to get a reverse. Lock up a cradle here. He's, he needs a cradle. He does have the cradle He's got locked it locked. Up. He's long. Oh, but he slipped. He slipped his head. So Brown's still in control on top. No additional points scored by the rest of Five seconds left here. Yeah, St. Ed's is going to go two for two to start the night. Two state champs. Crowd is not happy. 
lot of boos. With how that particular match is officiated. I guess when you're on top, you're going to get some haters, right? Some yeah. haters when well, you're on you know, the top of yeah. the game. <laughs> I always feel bad for the wrestler because, you know, you're hearing the boos. You know, that, that was his moment as a state champion. You know, you'd love to hear the, the applause, but instead it was kind of overpowered by the, the boos directed towards the official. Yeah. Weight cross coverage of OHSAA Wrestling, made possible by Swoka, the Southwest Ohio Wrestling Coaches Association. Klein Residential. Jeff Burkhoff, Old Coaches Association. Mark Flown of La Rosa's Cold Spring, Kentucky. Steve Burton, Friends of Operation Giveback. Kent Smith from State Farm. And Dr. Stephen Daly. Next up in Division I at the 120 pound weight class. We have Marcus Blaze of Perrysburg, a sophomore, facing off against Micah Medina, a senior from Oregon Clay. Marcus Blaze is a returning state champion, and I believe he's currently ranked third in the nation. And these two met last week, again, uh, in their district finals with uh, Marcus Blaze of Perrysburg coming out victorious. So Marcus, a defending state champion at the 113 pound weight class from last year. And then Micah Medina of Oregon Clay is actually a two-time state placer, placing sixth and seventh in the last two years, respectively. From Vincent Warren, senior Haley Snyder. From Boylestown, Chippewa. Sophomore Gabby Garton. Marcus Blaze is going to be in the black singlet and will be red on the scoreboard. Mike Medina will be uh, green on the scoreboard and actually you can see Clay on the front of his, his singlet. So <coughs> folks at home can figure out who's who then. Pretty incredible. Marcus Blaze, you know, he'll have over 50 wins this year. Yeah, yeah he went 55 and 0 a year ago. I'm curious to know who beat him this year because he's been pretty dominant. He has one loss on his record and in his high school career. I'm assuming it was something maybe Ironman finals or something like that where he may have taken a loss. Yeah, that would make sense. Right, because he's only a sophomore. Yeah, that lone, lone blemish on his record in two years of high school wrestling. Pretty impressive. Right now, he's in on a single. Pretty deep. Yep, he's going to get the takedown. Marcus plays with the takedown, so 2 nothing at the moment. He uh, signals for the optional start. And he lets him up to get escape, takes him down. I think we're going to see a series of... Uh, <clears throat> Takedowns and escapes here. It looks like Marcus is uh, going to put on a, on a takedown clinic. Marcus on a nice shot. Trying to drag it back to the center of the mat. Keep him in balance. Front trip. Covers. Gets a takedown. Like you said, Jerry, these two faced each other in the finals at Districts a week ago, and Blaze won that pretty decidedly. Major decision, 21-8. to eight. Wow. Put on a takedown clinic in that event as well. And here he's running a half. It's a pretty deep half. He's got his hips behind him. Well, you know, you wrestle the same guy multiple times in the year. Your goal is to... Either if you're the winning wrestler, you want to extend that lead. So say you beat them by a decision. Next time you want to beat them by a major decision. And, and, and after that, if you can tech them or a pin, 
Um, you know, on the other side, if you got majored, you want to keep this match closer, learn from uh, maybe the mistakes you might have made in that previous event. Yep. Six to two, time winding down in the first. Looks like uh, Marcus is content to just kind of watch the clock and let the time run out. Conserve a little energy. A 6-2 lead, he's gonna choose bottom. Marcus hits a stand up. <clears throat> and he kicks free for the escape. That's what you want to do. He got out of there in about eight seconds. He's working a two on one. Going back to a pick, but didn't get it. Now with an underhook. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of options. All right, he's in on the single. Should get the takedown here. Did he award it? Did not award it. Out of bounds. Oh, he did award it. She's getting that high single pretty often. That's a pretty, pretty slick move on his part. Yeah, and he sets it up in so many different ways, you know, it's hard to defend that. Because you think he's going to do one thing, and then he goes the complete opposite. Right, he's got the underhook. He's got the two-on-one he, he uh, works for him. You know, there was a drag set up right there. So many different attacks, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard to scout somebody like this. He can just pick you apart with so many different moves. And his defense is so good, he defends and he's right away attacking right into his offense. Another takedown, about 45 seconds left. Score is now 11 to three in favor of Marcus Blaze. And we'll see Blaze's brother coming up in the later bout. He's ranked number one in the country. I didn't know he had another, uh, there was another Blaze. There's, yep, Joey Blaze. Oh. He'll be wrestling a Cincinnati LaSalle wrestler. 13 to three, under 20 left in the second period. Yeah, who's the, be who's the better brother? Can you see them in the house <laughs> tearing up some furniture once in a while? Well, you know, I think Marcus, you know, looking to be a four-time state champ. Uh, Joey Blaze at 165 pounds, looking to be a three-time state champ, and I think he would have been a four-timer had, had COVID not ended that season three years ago. Right, we're first, in the third first. period. And Marcus Blaze with a quick takedown, kicks him out. action on uh, the Division Three finals match. Yeah, Blaze is starting to make these takedowns look easy. Yeah, right to a right. carry. He did not get the takedown there. Thought he was going to look for him and get out, but it did not happen. Good defense by Medina. You know, Blaze, though, he never panics. Medina looked like he was going to be able to step over once he dropped his hips, but Blaze went right into a carry. Wow. Head shot to a single leg, true top finish. Kicking him out again. just so good at chain wrestling. There's never any stoppage in his momentum and his motion. He's just constantly moving forward, changing angles. It's and a that's a down. tech fall. It's a tech fall. To end so. the match with a tech fall. So he's, tech fall is at least a 15 point differential and then the, the referee stops the match. He's a two time state champ as a sophomore. I don't think he's even breathing hard. Look at him. No. Right. I mean, just incredible shape. Your champion at 120 pound weight class division one, Marcus Blaze of Perry's Park. Pretty impressive. 
I mean, is he even happy? I don't know. It's hard to tell. <laughs> he just want to stay tight all. Just another day at work. <laughs> it looks like it. He looks like a kid. He's probably going to start training again tomorrow. He's going to yeah. do something tomorrow. You know, they expect it, so. Next up will be our 126-pound weight class. And who do we have coming in for that? We have Phoenix Contos of Toledo weight, a returning state placer from a year ago, wrestling up against Ryan Avalos, another Perrysburg wrestler who's a returning two-time state placer, state runner-up a year ago at 120 pounds. So Ryan Avalos from Perrysburg, he won the district, Perrysburg district last week. Uh, Phoenix Contos from Toledo Weight finished third. So I'm guessing maybe those two met in the semis. That with, could be. Uh, Avalos winning. Division two, 120 pound weight class. So Phoenix Contos was actually at a different school a year ago as a freshman, Genoa area in division three where he was fourth. Weight this year as a sophomore. Yeah, you see that every once in a while where, you know, people making a move from a school to a different school and um, you know just looking for something different to make them better and we're just waiting for the girls division to wrap up uh, we have a four timer over there she's holding up fours she's holding up fours I'll let you check that out Looks like that was Haley Snyder. Four time state champ. On mat number four, Division three, 126 pound championship match. Makes me wonder where she's going to college. Mapleton Junior, Brock Durbin. Iowa. She'll have plenty of opportunity. Right. Xenia Legacy Christian Academy Junior, Dylan. You know, we see a lot of Perrysburg here. I think if there's a team that can tend, look to beat St. Ed's at some point, it could be Perrysburg. Division two yeah. on mat number three. Well, they've been there the past few From years, Hartley, but you know, it's hard. To, it's hard to compete when you qualify your entire team and you put six in the finals. Right. That's a lot of points, and uh, I haven't counted them up. I wonder how many other places they have. The Division One Championship. And I'm assuming all four, 14 scored uh, points for the team. Yeah. Excuse me. The Division One Championship. I just wonder if they have all, if all 14 are state placers. From that could be. Sophomore Phoenix Contos. Phoenix Contos. From Perrysburg, senior Ryan Avalos. The girls 115 pound championship match on Matt Vaughn. From Delaware Hayes, senior Molly Wells. Phoenix Contos coming in. He is a sophomore uh, with a 44 and three record. He is in the yellow, yellow singlet. And uh, Ryan Avalos from Perrysburg, he comes in with a 39 and two record uh, as a senior. And he will be in the gold and black singlet. Okay. Match kicks off. Ooh, an ankle pick. Avalos in quick for the takedown. At least in no time getting that takedown. Let's him go, kicks him out, two to one. On the left, we're gonna see another takedown clinic here. Like the previous match. Yeah, I think it's so important to try to get that first takedown in the match, you know, build your confidence and right, get the lead set, and stay in the lead. Yeah, right. Set the set the tone for the match. Oddly enough, these two did not see each other at districts a week ago. 
Really? Contos losing uh, in a quarterfinal match to a St. Edwards wrestler, Sandifer. And Avalos claiming the title at Districts. Right here in front of us on mat three, you see my buddy Elliot Spence officiating. You guys remember Elliot? Oh, yeah, an elder wrestler. This is his first state referee. I believe so. Yeah, there's a few new referees I've seen, um, which uh, which is great for the sport. You know, for former wrestlers, former state placers coming back and giving back to the sport and helping out. Right now, Ryan Avalos sitting on the two to one lead over Phoenix Contos. Goes for the head and arm. Kind of a big move. It's either big on the plus side or it could be big on the negative side if you miss it. But right now they're in the scramble. Obviously, uh, Phoenix Contos, or the Grand Avalos, right, all knotted up, potentially dangerous. Looked like his leg was, you know, got to watch the knee in that situation. You know, I coach a lot of youth kids, and we, we say you can use the head and arm, but when you get to high school, it's hard to get. Right. You know? Yeah. And obviously, if you're losing big time, that's your desperation shot, but it's kids can defend that pretty good nowadays at the high school level. Yeah, it's kind of uh, early in the match, I thought, to try to hit a head and arm, try to hit a big move like that. Like I said, it's usually all or none. Well, in this case, fortunately, it didn't hurt him. Right. Being able to scramble out of that position. But you're right, it could be feast or famine with that. There are pins happening today. There are. <laughs> Ryan Avalos and Phoenix Contos all tied up now, two to two. Second period of, of your 120 pound Division I weight class. Avalos in on a, on a single. Take down, nice finish. It. Gets two takedown. And about a minute left in the second period. Looks like he's trying to lock up a cradle. mentioned this earlier when we were talking about the St. Ed's wrestlers at 106 and 113 pounds. Avalos, I'm sure, has many good partners in practice. We just saw Marcus Blaze win a title at 120 pounds, and now we see him at 126 pounds with a 4-2 lead. And I'm sure those guys push each other in practice. You know, the whole team's pushing each other when you have all those guys at that level, you know, it makes it's makes no, for an awesome team. No place to hide in that practice room. Nope. <laughs> and I almost enjoy watching their coach coach these guys almost as much as watching them wrestle. You see him over in the corner. I'm not sure who that is, but he's, he's pretty entertaining to watch. About 40 seconds left here in the second period. Very well coached. You know, they, they break and go out of bounds, and they're immediately looking over at their coach, getting instruction. Really quick stand Nice up. mat return. Yep. Big lift. You know, if we had the, the stage as we used to be set on for the finals, that would have made a nice sound. Yes, it would have. We'd have the thump. Seconds left here. And run that standing half. Nice lift. It looked like he wanted to take it back if this was freestyle. Send him for five. Tries a front Granby roll. Tilt come up here. Trying to get a tilt. Trying to get some back points. Not able to keep him there for two seconds. End of the period. 
talk about that lift, that guarantee, the bet money that he does freestyle Greco in the in the spring and summer. Yeah. Looks like we have blood time. Each wrestler taking advantage of the blood time and getting some water, getting hydrated. All the other three matches are completed, so all the eyes are on this Division I match, third period here. Seems to be the case more often than not with Division I. Sure a little does. closer contested bouts. Yep. I prefer the pins myself. Much more dramatic. You just want to get out of here. <laughs> Much more dramatic. <laughs> Jerry's been here for three long days. Oh, a throw attempt. Tries to throw, but does it safely out of bounds. <clears throat> We're going to try it. Do it near the out of bounds in case you, you don't get it. And just slip out of bounds and no harm. About a minute 30 left. I don't expect uh, Contos to start pushing the pace here. This is down three points. Yeah, I predict maybe another head and arm attempt at some point down by three. It's going to either need to get two takedowns or he's gonna to need to get a takedown and, some, and a turn. Yeah, he's choosing to stay low on his knees, working from his knees, now he's back up on his feet. He's gotta get some motion, standing yeah. in front of him is not gonna get it done. Nope. He's got about just under a minute. He's gonna to have to start pushing the pace here. <clears throat> There's one. There's an attempt, but he didn't get it. Avalos felt it coming. He was ready to drop his hips, so Contos bailed on it. Smart. Looks like he's trying to set up a lot, a lot drop. Oh, there it is. There's one he's attempt tried again. It. Again, no harm. You know, he's making these attempts at the, at the upper body throws. Um, but he's doing it in such a way that he's making sure he doesn't put himself in jeopardy. He's got that leg locked. Pretty... Single. See if he can finish this. He's going to run out of time. He can trying do something to slip here. in the far leg. Avalos saw it coming. Snaps in the cradle. And your champion at the 120-pound weight class, Ryan Avalos from Perrysburg. Good match, good match there. I believe we're going to continue with the Division One boys. Yep, we're going to go up to 132 here. That was the second champ for Perrysburg, wasn't it? Continuing wrestling. Uh, yes. Back to back. So we've had back to back St. Edwards champions and back to back Perrysburg champions. Coming up at 132, we have Cade Brown of Lakewood St. Edwards, a junior, uh, former state placer last year, in seventh place. And he's going to be going against Jackson Joy of Wadsworth, who is also a junior. And he is a state champion last year and state runner-up the year before. This should be a good match. Yeah, let's see if St. Ed's can go three for three, but the, it's a tall task going up against Jackson Joy, a three-time finalist. So we we'll looking to capture his second state championship. From Lakewood, St. Edward, Cade Brown. Kate Brown, isn't that a country singer? And from Wadsworth Jr. I don't know country you tell, you tell us. Maybe it's Kane Brown. If it's not, it sounds like a country <laughs> singer. On mat number one, the girls 120 pound championship final. 
from Clayton Northmont. I don't know about you guys, we got to get some of our Southwest Ohio guys in the finals, yeah. some of our lightweights. Right. And we'll see a few later, but not enough. You know, you look at Jackson Joy, he's pretty lean for a 32-pounder. For a yes, he is. Got a lot of length. Probably helps getting leverage. Jackson Joy in the red singlet and uh, Cade Brown in the dark green. He's got that spider. Oh, just quick. Just beat him around the Ooh. corner. Cade Brown hitting a Granby to roll through that. No control yet. These guys are scrambling. A scrambling, a lot of showing off their funk. Grab, grabbing the ankle and putting it over your head. And Joy is in the better position here, being elevated. Brown being he on is. his hip. He could, he could get a leg cradle in here if he can reach up, get the head, which he's you know, he's trying to reach up and get the head, and then lock it on the leg. He's got his leg still, which is making it difficult for Joy to secure the takedown. Bit of a potentially dangerous there. Uh, I don't know if he, well, potentially dangerous or if there was a stalemate. Let's just see, we're all locked up and neither wrestler could seem to improve. That was the Granby. Okay, Cade Brown earlier. Jackson Joy going on a two on one. Ty to try to set up his, his shot. Shot. It's the ankle. See if he can finish here. Looks pretty nothing good. Nothing yet, nothing yet. Oh, surprised he gave it to him. I guess he was on his hip and gave him reaction. I thought he was going to lock up that cradle. See, I didn't think he was going to get two till then. There. Lost his headgear. Ten seconds remain in the first period. We'll just let them continue until there's no more action, then I'll give him his uh, headgear back. Jackson Joy takes a 2-0 lead into the second period over Kate Brown. Tell me if I'm wrong, guys. Look at uh, Joy's singlet. It's about as plain as you can get. Nothing on it, no frills. All red. All red. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think it says I mean, Wadsworth it anywhere. It doesn't say anything. Reminds me of the Stanford wrestler a few years back in the NCAA finals that just wore the black singlet. Maybe they're on a budget, yeah. right? And we'll have no money for singlets. We're going to buy some just plain red ones. Some stock, stock singlets. Stock singlets, that's what it is. <laughs> Make them our final singlets. Well, you have some wrestlers that like to be flashy with the shoes, with the singlet. It's like you. You're the shoe man, aren't you? That's right, Jerry. Sporting your, uh, your powder blue, <laughs> powder blue, um, you just <laughs> shoes that you bought here at the tournament? Not currently. That's that's B Rabbit over there. Hey, I don't know if you guys follow shoes, but some of these shoes are going for a couple hundred bucks. Some of the old vintage shoes. Oh yeah, people well, the are selling old them for crazy shoes. prices. Mm -hmm. I got a pair on my. Actually, I have two pair on my my trophy wall in my basement. We go turn them in. Make some money on them from yep. the 70s. Yep. Probably didn't get much use out of them, did you? Well, they're almost like cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you talk about no frills. He's got a nice figure four lock on, on the leg there. You know, his length, his length allows him to put legs in and secure that stuff pretty good. Still looking at only a two nothing score here in the second period. About a minute left. It's a false start. Caution. Caution on Jackson Joy. Kind of jumped the gun there a little bit. I feel like both their names could be country singer. Jackson Joy. Kate Brown. Well, I think you're thinking of Jackson Brown. Jackson Brown, there you go. Right. Who's a little combination of both. He's got that figure four back with the leg. Q 
accumulating riding time if that was a thing here in high school. Which is not. It's not. But mentally, it breaks that bottom wrestler when you can't get out and you just spend the bottom trying to get out that whole period. Right. Wears you out. With 120 pounds on your, on your back when you're down. Hey guys, here's my deal. If you win a state title, you should have the day off tomorrow. How many of these uh, wrestlers are going to go to school tomorrow? That's a good question. Being, being Sunday night. I know I'm not going to go to school tomorrow. No, me neither. <laughs> Another stalemate. What was that time? That was time. Okay. Here we just start third period. Again, tight match. 2 tight. nothing. Jackson Joy of K. Brown. Yeah, the score reflects a tight match, but I feel like Jackson Joy's been in pretty much control this entire match. Aside from the from the scramble, on top he just dominated there. He's out quick. Brown doesn't even want to mess with him there. Back to the ankle nice pick. Ankle pick. See if he can finish near cradle right there. I see it. Is he coming? He's trying. He sees it also. Yeah, that see length if can plays lock a, that up. That length plays a huge advantage. He can be it. Collar tying on your head and then attack low on your on your legs, it's hard to defend. It's a roll. Nice. Didn't get any separation. 5-0, Jackson Joy. I think Jackson Joy is going to be <clears throat> happy just to kind of ride him out here. Going into a crossbody to a banana split. There he is. In on the shot. You're right, even though it's 5 nothing, he's controlling this entire match. Right. Yeah, Brown hasn't had many opportunities to score. Yeah, he's Jackson, been defensive. Jackson Joy's never been in question, really, in terms of position. Under a minute left in the match. Right there, he's just riding what we call a claw ride. Really, Jackson George is hanging on. I don't, I'm not sure why they're not calling Stone. Oh, well, there he is. There's the stall call. <coughs> so Jackson Joy warns for stalling. He read the ref's mind. It's mind meld. This is something a former referee. referee oh, I thought he was going to go for a splatal. Got that leg in, attacking the far side. Or the banana split. Is that what it's called? Well, he's looking for the guillotine now. Oh, he gets painful. that arm, gets it over his head. Oh, he's in trouble here. But Joy doesn't panic, stays right. in on the leg. Recovered. I was going to go into a scramble situation. Potentially dangerous. Potentially dangerous. It's only four seconds left. I think this one's in the books. Yeah, Jackson Joy is going to repeat as state champion at 132 pounds. Claim his second title. And a year from now, he'll be looking for his third. Good wrestling. Good wrestling. Hey, for once, we're not the last match. Right. Division two and Division three matches there's your, still. There's your champion, Jackson Joy from Wadsworth. 120 pound weight class. Throws up the deuces. So St. Edwards lost a match there. The crowd was pleased with that. After the conclusion of uh, the 132 pound weight class, we're going to switch over to get some local coverage of the 125 pound girls championship match, which will feature Reagan Briggs of Harrison, who comes in at 34 and 2, and she's defending state champion at 115, now wrestling 125. And then she's going to be going against Anam, Anam Mahdi from Brexville, who is a freshman and comes in at 24 
27 and two. We have a St. Paris Graham, Division two. It's a late takedown to tie this match up at five apiece. And back points, nope. We got one swipe, one. Only one, two. Wow, they counted two swipes. They gave him two swipes. Two swipes right at the whistle. That's your buzzer beater. Right, absolutely. Here in March Madness. That's your three point shot from half court, just chucking it up right there and, and getting it. Take down, then the turn with time expiring. One. I don't know about that two count. Yeah, I thought time was out. I thought uh, I saw one. Well, and you have to break 45 degrees. I'm not so sure he quite broke 45 degrees. Get your protractor out and check it. Right, I am. <laughs> Coaches didn't question it, so. Yeah, that wrestler looks a little stunned. Meanwhile, in the Division Three match, it's uh, two to one, and it looks like this is in the uh, second part of the ultimate tiebreaker portion of the match. False start. So these wrestlers have already, already wrestled the regulation six minutes. And then they wrestled another minute in overtime. And now they just wrestled a, an eighth minute in overtime. I see Perry on the coaches' t-shirts. Another Perry area school, the state champion. I wonder if he chose this Perry because he might not crack the lineup in the other Perrysburg yep, or yep. Maslin Perry. If they're in the same area. Yep. That happens a lot. I think nowadays, you know, opportunity to go to a school or a private school, you know, can they make the lineup? And most of these guys want to be varsity wrestlers all four years. So, right. opportunity can they fit into that program and fit into the lineup. That's what I've always been curious about with St. Edwards, how you get guys to buy into that, knowing that they're probably not going to start as freshmen unless you are that next level competitor, you know, getting guys that'll come in and know they're going to be backups. And given somebody goes down like this year, somebody can step up. And sometimes it's a matter of saying, hey, if you want to wrestle in college, college coaches are looking at your junior and senior year. So hang in there. Eventually you're going to get into the lineup. On that to the Division One Championship from Dublin Kaufman Jr., Omar Ayu. Again, we're going to be switching over to the girls' coverage uh, because we have Reagan Briggs from the Harrison area. Uh, part of the viewing area in Southwest Ohio. Would you look at that? Another St. Ed's wrestler. Another St. Ed's wrestler. 125 pound championship match from Harrison Jr., Reagan Briggs. It's a local Harrison product. Her, Reagan Briggs, Defending State Champ. You don't say. <laughs> she is a junior, wrestling a freshman. We'll see what happens here. What do you predict? Pin? I'm going to go with a pin first period. I'm going to say pin. A minute 30. Also first pair. I'm going to say a minute 31. Wow. You know, if this was the price is right, you should have just gone with $1. Up here. Oh. One, oh. She's worked for the takedown, but no takedown. No takedown yet. I don't know, this oh. may be tighter than you thought. No, maybe until not. until maybe then. Not. <laughs> head and arm <laughs> from the knees. Little head and arm, she sits this up, and it's, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be settle all over. in there. She got a little high. So she'll reset. She still has it locked. 
Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. Now she's, she's on, on her, her back. back. Hold on, Jerry. This is not over. She's got that tight. Yeah, I thought maybe she held on to it just a little bit too long. She needed to let it go and reset. But she's going to work her way out of that. It's a cradle right there. Making that score four to two. Briggs still in the lead with the back points. We've got about a minute left. Uh-oh, I need a pin here in the next 30 seconds. Right. She's got the cross body in. I think Briggs was a little surprised as well. She's going for a roll. She got that arm deep. Not quite Almost got get the it. roll. Maddie, good job getting her elbow back, not getting too overextended. I don't know, maybe we underestimated Anna Maddie. Yeah. She seems to be riding pretty tight on top here. Well, I lost. I said a minute 30, we're at a minute 45. Right, you owe me. You said a minute 31. I did. I was, I'm still, gonna, I'm gonna be closer. Matthew's still going on. I'm gonna be closer. <clears throat> Provided there's a pin. And a Reagan Briggs. Work and a half here. First period ends four to two. Reagan Briggs in the lead. Be her choice. They defer. Maddie chooses down. Looking to cut into that deficit. We'll see what Reagan Briggs does on top here. I didn't. You could see any of her matches earlier today. Going into a spiral ride. Oh, suck back. Working that two on one wrist. Oh, she's got a working up trying to get a wrist bar. bar. See if she can work out to that side trap. Looking for the cradle. No, nope, not there. Nice transitioning between moves. Well, to see that pressure on top, you know, staying off your knees, keeping the pressure on your opponent. She's got that wrist rise, she's working. Gonna have to come out to the side. Nope, illegal hold. Not sure what happened there. But oh, Division One, the returning state champ is on his back. St. Edward's wrestler is taking it to the defending champ. Yeah, we got St. Ed's on mat two, and we got Graham wrestler on mat three. So again. Some of the top teams here. That guy's in the finals. Right now at 125, you're watching Reagan Briggs of Harrison up by only one point over Anna, Anna Maddie. Reagan Briggs is a defending state champion here. Briggs get hit for stalling? Uh, no, illegal hold. Oh, okay. Oh, well, she got a cradle going? She's trying to work the cradle. I've seen a few Harrison wrestlers hit that. Right. I, uh, I, I tribute Brian Carroll, former St. X wrestler, for taking the cradle, taking it with him over to Harrison, and teaching his junior high program. Shared the secret recipe. Briggs rides the entire second period, takes a four to three lead, and she's going to choose bottom, hoping to get. One, maybe two, and more. But Maddie is hanging tough as a freshman. Yes, she is. I've not seen her on top yet, though. Megan Briggs, I believe she's, she's 
She's trying to work for look for a roll. Yeah, it looks like it. She's trying to get that hurt up. Overextend and drop that elbow so she can pull it to the mat and hip over. But Maddie's not giving it to her. And I'll be looking for a basic stand up here. Right. Get one. Maddie's riding tough here. Have a minute 19 left. At some point, you know, Maddie's probably going to have to kick Reagan Briggs out. Yep. If she can't turn her, and she's really not come close to turning her. She's going to have to give her the escape and then try to get a takedown. It was a false start. Caution on Reagan Briggs. At some point, her coach will, will make that decision for her and say, kick her and let's look for a takedown. Right. Another caution. Right. Her hand was not on the navel. Yep. Oh. Riga Briggs keep trying for the, the roll. Backs on Division One, returning champ. Puts the St. Ed's wrestler up to his back and wins the bout and returns defense's state title and then spikes his headgear. That might get a team point. Or not. A little home cooking for the Columbus Dublin Kaufman wrestler. These guys look very similar too. They got the same barber. Let's get do. back to. Um, we got Briggs. a takedown. Well, a almost carry. a takedown. Oh, and Reagan backs. Briggs. Sitting it back. Reagan Briggs with a 5 3 lead right now over Animati. So she's going to score some back points here, if not get a fall. You got the fall? Uh, I Just three backs. Yeah. I think they went out of bounds. We got about 20 seconds left in the match. Went from a one point match, now it's totally blown open, 10 to 3. Reagan Briggs showing why she is the defending state champion. So in the girls' division, Division I boys, Division II boys, all three defending state champs defending their titles and repeating. Dragon Briggs. There we go. Second champ for Harrison on the girls' side. Yeah, I think they've locked up that girls' state title. The 125 pound girls' champion, Reagan Briggs of Harrison. The crowd goes wild. Next match, we're going to uh, stay with the, the girls division and we're going to take a look at the 130 pound championship weight cross coverage of OHSAA wrestling made possible by SWOCA, the Southwest Ohio Wrestling Coaches Association Klein Residential Jeff Burkhoff Old Coaches Association Mark Flown of La Rosa's Cold Spring, Kentucky. Steve Burke, Friends of Operation Give Back. Kent Smith from State Farm. And Dr. Stephen Daly. Next up on In this particular match, we have Kasia Zamet from Miamisburg who comes in uh, undefeated at 15-0. She is a two-time state champion and placed second uh, previously. She's going to be going against Cadence Wallace from Port Clinton. 
who is a former fourth place finisher. Well, Don, you had mentioned you'd seen uh, Cassia Zamet wrestle before. Yeah, and up at our Prodigy Wrestling Academy team, Joan, she's come up in the past and rolled around and done some live wrestling. And she's awesome, she's awesome. And she's one that gets on the mat, doesn't care who she wrestles. She'll wrestle the boys, wrestle the girls, wrestle lighter, wrestle heavier people. And uh, I really enjoy watching her. From Toledo Whitmer Jr., Jeremy Ginter. Again, Cassia Zamet from Miamisburg. Currently undefeated and a two-time state champion, three-time finalist. Four-time finalist. Four-time finalist counting today. Yeah. That is correct. Cannot get anything by you, Lou. That's right, That Jerry. is for sure. That's why I'm here. Uh, she's going against she's Cadence going Wallace. Job. Cadence Wallace from Port Clinton. <clears throat> and she is a former state placer. Cassie doesn't have a ton of matches this year and sometimes maybe she was hurt for a bit or whatever but sometimes your body is a little more fresh not having all the grinding of 30 40 matches coming into the state tournament yeah that's a good point I wonder if, if she wrestled some matches for the uh, boys team would that count on her record good question uh, good question for the girls division I mean maybe she wrestled the first half yeah and that, that could have been the, the case team. could have been the case <clears throat> Goes for a fireman's carry, Cassia does. She's got that elbow tight. It's interesting headgear. I haven't seen that type of headgear before. I don't know if these are headgear designed for girls, you know, with longer hair, maybe. Yeah, I think she's always worn that. And, uh, Probably some of that and really working hard to protect your ears too. Right. I see a lot of the guy wrestlers with cauliflower ear. I'm sure that's gonna become a <laughs> thing yeah. with the girls at some point. And I've seen some girls that have it. Oh, but the heavy. long hair sometimes yeah, covers it cover when it. they're not on the mat. Wow, she just got taken down. Keynes Wallace gets the takedown over Cassie Zamet. We have an upset in the making, Jerry. Possibly. Check out this again. She's in on a nice shot. Zamet trying to uh, kind of a chin toss or neck toss did not work. Caden's getting the takedown. In the second period here. Potentially dangerous. Yeah, sometimes coming in, you, you say, I got the state champ, returning state champ, nothing to lose. I'm going to go out there and wrestle my match. Oh. Nice. Nice changeover to a switch. It's the reversal. Reversal, maybe more. She's got that far tricep underneath. She might get backs. I don't believe they've awarded the reversal yet. One, 
Uh, she got one. She got. She did escape. get the reversal. Yes, did she? Did. Yep. Yeah, four to one. The reversal, then the escape by Zamet. She's in a bit of a hole here. Four to one. One minute, eight seconds remaining in the second period. Does that sit? Change over. And good momentum she forward. Almost caught her and took it to her back. Both these ladies are seniors. Plenty of opportunity for these ladies to go to college and wrestle. And I'm sure both of them have a number of offers already. But oh, there it is. Oh, in on the shot. She's on on the defense again. Splitting the legs. What a nice job. She can get that right arm around. She'll have another takedown. She gets that right arm through. Zamet's in trouble. There, two more. There she is. Wow, this could, be, this could be a major upset. This could be the biggest upset I would say so far Absolutely. of the evening. Yeah. So Kane Wallace in control here, 6'1". The 130 pound girls division wrestling championship as the second period comes to a close. In about six seconds, we have the final two minutes. Provided it doesn't go to overtime. Zamet chooses down to start the third period. Oh, we're still in the second. I still in second. Ah, that's right. It's five oh, seconds. Oh, trying to get it. Time. The rest are going to meet. Time may have run out. I would think she would get at least get a reversal. She, she got the two reversal. Tries to examine it. Tries to stand up here. And then essentially does a, a roll. It's like an arm spin from the bottom position. I'm sure Cassie is saying, hey, I'm going to stay cool. I'm down three, but it's all going to come. I'm going to keep working and working and get my points. So she gets her escape here and then take down. She's right back in business. That's it. Looking for a lift. She's controlling that far tricep. Her goal here is just Hey, let me get one point and get on my feet. Nothing fancy. Not looking for two, not looking for five. Just looking for a escape and get within two. She got about a minute 38 still. So again, she hasn't panicked. I look like locking hands there, but. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there was a false start. A caution. Keeping Zamet down with that half. Sure is. Oh, she picked her ankle. Zamet has the ankle, but Caden's still in control. Caden's Wallace riding tough here. Inside a, under a minute. Potentially dangerous. A little bit too much pressure on the shoulder. Again, the goal has to be here as, hey, I gotta get out of there. I gotta get out from the bottom, get to my feet. I know right. I can score a takedown. It's got 45 seconds. Gonna have to amp up the, uh, the pace here a bit, I think. She's on her feet. One point here. I think Wallace is 
kind of expecting her to try to the hip toss. Yep. Potentially dangerous. Seven seconds, heading back to the center mat. Zanet's got to get moving. One, then two. Yep. But she hasn't shown much to get out from the bottom. It's definitely going to have to go into flurry mode here. She gets caution for lining up incorrectly. Knees got to be back off the line. I believe she had her knees on the line. Got a cut. There's the one. Now she needs two. She needs to get the takedown here. Tie it up. And she gets it. That's what we're talking about. Just kind of a fireman's carry slash dump. She's got to just stay with it. Down. Stay with it. And uh, three seconds get that to take down in overtime. All right. Let's see what happens here in overtime. New match. That's right. It's going to be a one minute overtime. She stayed calm, didn't try to do too much. So we'll get the one, then the two, tied it up. Sudden victory, here we go. First point scored wins. See Jerry's on the edge of his seat. Oh, oh here we go. Zamet, did she get it? Oh, they awarded the two. She got right? it. She got the takedown. That's the beauty of wrestling, man. You just keep wrestling. You keep wrestling, score your points. Little slow mo here. Keep your cool. What a comeback. We're going to scramble. Zamet steps over. At that the point, got the, got the two point takedown. Threw the boot in. <clears throat> Pretty emotional for Cassia. Good for her. Happy for her. Great comeback. Down six to three, most of the match. All right now we still have the Division I boys championship match going on. Looks like it's getting ready to end. Brock Herman of Brexville with a commanding 14 to four lead over Jeremy Ginter. About five seconds left on that bout. If I won that one, Jerry. Up next, one of our feature bouts. With yeah. A local Sycamore product. Yeah, excited to watch this one. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this match all day. This is the 150 pound weight class, <clears throat> Division One. Well, now we're looking for Southwest Ohio, looking for our first state champ here tonight. That's right. For the boys. So it just so happens Eugene Harney wrestling for a state championship. He was second in the sectional, second at the district. Both times falling to Connor Kleinberg. And just how the bracket worked out. Eugene Harney with a huge upset over Winton. Dinkins of Perrysburg is a returning state runner-up. I don't know about a huge upset, but an upset nonetheless with a projected champ there. Won in the semis, and now he's looking for a state championship. First for Sycamore since 1999. If he can get the job done. Yep. He's going to be going up against Bradley Eaton from guess where? I'm I guess. Say that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he is a former state placer last year, placing fifth at 138. I think the last state champ with Omar Scrugg. That's right. Yep. Check out that hair. Yeah, he loves that hair. I hope to see him open up in this match. Last week, his match with Kleinberg was a little conservative, but I think that's because they are so familiar with one another. Right. I know Harney's been kind of nursing a, uh, a cut eye, I believe on his eyelid, most of the most of the tournament. You can kind of see it a little bit. Get the right camera angle here. Hopefully he's got a good cut, man. Right. Nick. It's on Mick in his corner. Mick Jagger. 
Oh, Mick from Rocky. Come on. <laughs> Arnie in that low stance. Very explosive, very athletic. Exceptional hips. Yeah, I talked to uh, Eugene's uh, dad all week. You know, he's more nervous than his son. You know, it's an emotional sport for the parents. I wonder if these two have met at any point this season. Hardy in on the on shot. Nice, nice, nice shot, nice shot. And finish. Quick, deep, finish. It's one thing, one thing to get in, but to finish it, especially against an Eds wrestler. Right. Yep. Beautiful take throws down. in the boot. Beautiful takedown. Well, the majority of the crowd's going to be rooting for Eugene as well, facing up against a St. Ed's wrestler. Eugene kicks him, kicks him out, that is. Back down to his. Oh, watch out for that eye. Got him right in his eye. Things. That's got the cut. Now Eaton with the leg. But Harney's pretty good in this position. Right, he's got the balance. Uh, shin oh. lizard. And they're not oh, giving it up. Did he the give two? it? He gave him the two. And that's going to yeah, be a question. I would question how, did he well. how did he give that to him? I don't know. I would question that as well. A lot of people are wondering look, that. Look, he's in on the single, but there was no reaction time there. Yeah. You're out, there's no two. If there is, then where's the one for loss of control? Marty's eye is really bleeding now. You can tell it's been a tough tournament. A state tournament <laughs> it is brutal. Yeah. It is like a meat grinder. Eugene's so athletic. You know, you talk about a lot of these wrestlers wrestle year round. I know Eugene plays football and he does track and field in the spring. So there's only a short period of time that he's actually wrestling wow. during this during the year. Here's the replay. Yeah, I, I struggle to see that as uh, getting control beyond reaction time by Bradley Eaton. But as it stands, the match is all knotted up, two to two. Still in the first period. <laughs> Working on his cut. All right, you got the bleeding to stop. You're getting ready to go again. 30 seconds remaining. Marty up and out quickly. Quickly, nice. Tied it up. We're three to three. Hands to the face. We're going to get a call here. There's one. One green. There we go. Hand to the face, yep. right. Continued hand to the face. With that, Harney takes a 4 3 lead. So far, I like the action and the pace of this match. Yep. Right. A lot of movement. Fun match to watch. This winds down on the end of the first period. Eugene Harney up by one point over Bradley Eaton to St. Edwards. It is St. Edward's choice, he chooses down. I don't know, do you think Harney's gonna kick him here, kick him out? I think eventually he will. Yeah, he might ride for a little bit if yep. he gets in any kind of trouble. Absolutely, yep. I'm gonna try to wear down your opponent a, a little bit, but he's out pretty quick, 10 seconds. And we're even again at four. He likes that loose stance. Yes, he does. We almost take away that guy's options when you're that low. You know, if this guy wants to shoot on the legs, he's got to come meet you or meet you down at that level. Right. He's got to go to a front headlock, and depending on if you're comfortable in that position. 
but I would imagine any edge wrestler would be comfortable in most positions. Right. Trying to step around. Well, Harney's got Harney. that elbow tight. Ooh, he had a cradle, I thought. Fighting off. Fought off the takedown. We got more blood. He reminds me of Lucas Bird. I got a chance to see him at the Big Tens uh, last weekend, and uh, he's down in that low stance most of his matches when he's on his feet. I don't know. You know, you'd think it would, would be a little bit of a disadvantage to be down on on one knee or two knees, you know, when they, well, they call the, you know, the, the takedown, you know, taking them down. You're already halfway down. You almost think it would be a disadvantage. Thoughts, Lou? What do you think? Well, I think with that position, if you're comfortable down there, the opponent's got to come to you, and they're going to be opened up. If you're, you know, if you can get lower than they are, you can get down low and get into your shot. I don't know, what do you think, Don? You think it, it's a, it definitely opens up that double leg blast. You know, if the guy's even in a good stance, he's higher than you. And if there's the opportunity to, to kind of just go in there and get that double leg blast. Yeah, we always preach a low stance. You know, if you're if you're standing tall, you're opening up your legs to many attacks. Reminds me of a, a wrestler from Mason back in the day, Robert Shepard. Yep, yep. Loved going to that low stance, and it was difficult. A lot of guys were frustrated with that. He let you walk right into a carry. Hmm. Hanging on that collar tie. Now he comes up. Match is all tied up four to four. See, Eaton's having a tough time getting to those legs because they're so far, he's so low. He's not getting the angles. He's just mainly reaching. We've got a stoppage of uh, more blood. We need a blood well, transfusion. This time it's uh, his nose, I guess. Oh. <clears throat> he's uh, fixing that bandage a couple times it's got to be careful yep. there that and his headgear I mean his headgear looks like he needs to tighten that front strap yep well, I think with all that hair too there's a lot of space for movement catches a little breather here so a bloody eye a bloody nose bloody lip That's wrestling. That's wrestling. It's wrestling. not patty cake. It's <laughs> wrestling. Eugene had an older brother that wrestled. Uh, was a state alternate a couple years ago. I'm sure he's here watching his brother. And now he's got a Band-Aid on his forehead. He has blood under his eye. Did he have a brother on the team this year also? I'm sorry? Doesn't Eugene also have a brother on the team this year? He has a brother, no. His brother graduated no? okay. a couple years ago. Izumi was his uh, older brother. The fact that Eugene's face is so beaten up just shows you that he uses that his face to defend a lot, and especially in that low stance. You're going to have to use that. You know, we teach head, hands, and hips right. for defense. So he uses that face first. Sycamore also had a 106 pounder that qualified for the state tournament. Adam Gelman, you guys saw him wrestle last weekend at the districts. Right. He's a district champ. Yep. Okay, 16 seconds left in the second period. <clears throat> Again, it's all nodded up at 4-4 four four at the 150 pound Division I weight class. Cool. Thought he was going to drop in on that low shot. Whose choice is it? Is it Harney's choice? Yes, it is. He's going to take that. Okay. He got out in about two seconds last time he was in that position, so. Right. See what happens here. I think it'll be quick. <laughs> Jinxed it. You know, he, well, he might be okay, you know, letting some of the yeah. time run off the clock and then getting his escape. That's true. 
always facing him once he comes up and breaks. There's your escape. There'll be one there. There's the one. There's your escape. Carney, 5-4 lead. So now that hands to the face is really coming into play. Right. The penalty point. Yep, yep. absolutely. That's the difference. Eaton's bringing it now. He realizes he's got to start going, maybe try to get a stall call against Harney. Neither wrestler has been warned. I haven't really seen any, any stalling at all. They've both been pretty active. Oh, he's in deep. He is in on deep shot, but this Harney going to fight it out. He's so athletic, Harney. See, right here, I'd be looking for him to attack, re-attack right there, low shot. He's trying to circle in so he doesn't get hit for stalling. He's got to be careful Turn opening up that carry. shot. 32 seconds. Got to lift that. Oh, here we go. Here. He can pop, one up, pop one down. One and hook. Hop out here. Pop his head out. Just got to be careful. You're still up by one. 20 seconds left in the match. Stalemate soon. Get that two, get the two, get the two. Uh oh. He's got the leg still. There we go. I think he's probably gonna satisfied hang on to just it. hanging in. Yeah. To it. Yep. Two one. There you awesome. go. Nice. The champion, Eugene Harney. And Cincinnati's happy for him. First boys champion. Sycamore's this first year. state champion since 1999. Neither one of these guys were district champions, but he showed up this weekend. I'm sure he, he looks and feels like he's been through war. Yep. <laughs> Good for him. Happy for him. Yep, absolutely. Now, the next match coming up, we're going to switch back to the girls' division. This will be the 140-pound girls division which will fe feature Sophia Roars from Lebanon at a 40 and 3 record she's a returning state placer fifth last year and she is going to be going against sophomore Eve Matt from Greenview uh, Eve comes in at a 37 and 2 also a returning state placer from last year on mat number three, Division Two, from Medina Buckeye Junior, Caden King. From Watersville Indian Creek, Senior Dominic Patera. We talked about the awards. They may be waiting to the end to do all the awards. Yeah, I think which so. I didn't think On was going to be the two, case. Division One, the championship I'm not mad about it. From Senior, <laughs> I think our. Uh, our I viewers think, appreciate I think the that also. just want to get on the mat and right. yeah. Keep it going. And yeah, I think, like you said, Dom, we were talking about this, you keep all the fans here. You know, if you break and have all these this lull in action, a lot of the lower weights tend to leave. Absolutely. And then you're left at the end of the tournament with, you know, a lighter crowd. And it just doesn't have the same feeling, the electricity. Okay, this should be an exciting bat bout. 140 girls state championship titles. Sophia Roars from Lebanon versus Eve Matt from Greenview. Sophia Roars is in the maroon and white. Eve Matt from Greenview in the black and blue. Sophia Roars. In on a shot, trying to finish. She can pop her head. She can get the two takedown. But Eve Matt is saying no. It's not going to happen that easy. I take it back. That's actually Sophia Roars prevent, yep. preventing Eve Matt from That's right. from finishing that single. Yep. Ooh, 
Drops in on the shot. He met in a shot, but kind of crumpled under. Nice sprawl. Now re-attack. Let's see if we get near cradle here. Oh. oh. Eve Matt's in. Takedown, looking for more with the half. That's pretty deep. Eve Matt gets can run it over. Uh-oh. Roar's in trouble. Roar is in trouble. Thread it. This is called a cement mixer. And she's able to fight out of that. But Eve Matt gets two near fall out of that. Sophia Roars now escapes. And she's going to try a cement mixer of her own. Going straight to going straight to the near cradle. You know, you you know, you call it a cement mixer. There's a ton of names for that move. There's Bulldog, what? Bulldog, Panther, right. Cow Catcher. Every every school has their own name for that move. Yep. That is correct. Elder calls it the Panther, and they uh, in the youth level they show it all the time. Well, I can understand why Elder is the only team that calls it the Panther. I gotta believe in Pennsylvania. LaSalle, we Bullard. call it the Bulldog. <laughs> Growing up, yeah, Bulldog. Another takedown for Matt. Six to one lead. She's got her head, but I don't see an advantage of keeping that head. Because she was already awarded the takedown. Catches the cross wrist, looking for a half. Oh, this half looks deep. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good half. Sophie Roar's in trouble here. She is oh, up, is. and there's the fall. Your champion at 140 pounds, girls division, Eve Matt by fall. She'll have two more years to come back and defend that title. Being a sophomore. Probably switch over to the boys 165 pound. 157. I'm sorry, 157 pound finals where we have Chris Ernest of Wadsworth, who's a senior and he is a defending state champion, two time placer. He's going against Ethan Burden from Dublin Kaufman, who uh, is a former finalist and two time state placer. Ernest in the white and red singlet. Burden in the pinstripes. The clover on the back. He's got the leg. Trying to keep him in bounds. Yeah, you got to bring him back center. Oh, he's going to get it. Oh, I'm not no, he yep. was out. Oh, my goodness. Slid All that out work. of bounds. Slid out of bounds. All that work doesn't get to. I think he wants a challenge, but they don't do that in high school. No, they don't. Here we go. Instant replay. Hit the takedown, but his feet slid out past the out of bounds line. He needed to bring that more center to not give Ernest that opportunity to kick out of bounds. Starting third period. Potentially dangerous situation. Whenever the man throws in a second leg and the opponent stands up, that automatically is potentially dangerous because the uh, wrestler on top is kind of at the mercy if the, if the bottom wrestler would drop. He has a uh, distinct danger of having his knee damaged. Burton kicks away, it's one to one. You knew Burden was a Prince fan with those shoes. See the purple shoes? Oh yeah. These look like some throwbacks. Yep. As you were like saying earlier, Asics. yeah, those things are probably worth a pretty penny. Jerry, are those the shoes you have hanging in your trophy room at home? Uh, they're not as nice as that. They are navy blue, actually. 
with white stripes. <laughs> Stalling on green, warning on burden. We're all tied up one to one. Takes a Third shot. Period. Ernest cuts the corner. Now burden elevating. Burden can pop his head out. There's two. I think that's two. I, I think it is. No, no points yet. Wow. Oh my he goodness. Was, if earlier we saw a two, Girl but they like did two. call, and they didn't call he's that. He's got that cradle locked up, but he's not. There's two. two. 25 seconds left. If you're Burden, you can just hang out there, right? You yeah, right. Hang combination, hang yep. out you don't have for to do another it. 10 seconds. No need to put yourself oh. in jeopardy. He still has the leg, though. He's in control. He's got to get Five behind seconds. him if he's going to tie this up. He's not able to tie it up. Nice. Late takedown to the win for Burden. Knocks off the returning state champ and gets his first title. Nice win for him. Nice win for the Columbus area. Ethan Burden, your champion at 157 pound Division I state championships. There's a replay, he was in on a shot. He's called out of bounds on that particular one. Exciting, he just slammed his coach. <laughs> Missed it. Let me get a replay on that. I think his coach will be a little sore. That was hard. That was, he didn't bring him down under control. That no, would have been a penalty not. point. That's, that's a slam. Yeah, it is. It's going to be hurting tomorrow. We're going to switch back to the girls' division, 145. We have Pound, a LaSalle wrestler at 65. I think they're going to go to Carson Thomas yeah. with the LaSalle at 165. Uh, I'm sorry, 165. For the yep. boys in the 165 pound weight class. On mat number four, Carson Thomas, a sophomore, coming in with a 42 and 8 record. He's got a tall task ahead of him as he's going to be facing up against Joey Blaze of Perrysburg, a returning two time state champion. Currently undefeated at 43 and 0 and ranked number one in the country. Wow. And I, and I think if that finishes early, we'll head over to the girls' match. We have a Lebanon wrestler at 145. Yeah, I guess depending on how quickly. Well, look at this. This will be a nice test for Carson to see where he's at on the national level. Well, he's only a sophomore. Yeah, he's going up against a senior. He's had an outstanding well, tournament. He believe majored in the first round, and then he had pins in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Let's see if Cincinnati can get another state champion. Would love it. We saw Joey Blaze's younger brother, Marcus Blaze, earlier. Joey Blaze will be going to Purdue. Jesse Next year. From Lebanon, As you guys know, Lexi we got uh, Dustin Norris wrestles there. That's right. From Cincinnati LaSalle. Few LaSalle products wrestling in the Big Ten. You mentioned Lucas Bird earlier yep. Yep. at Illinois. Trey Sizemore also at Illinois. Carson Thomas from LaSalle in the red and white. Ray Blaze in the black singlet. Two piece. Two piece black singlet. Out of bounds, no takedown. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems to be a little bit of a size difference, even though they are both 165 pounders. Maybe it's the maturity of a senior against a sophomore. Yeah, definitely see it. Just like Marcus Blaze, Joey just constantly moving, 
constantly creating angles. Slack to get, get behind, he'll get the takedown. Thomas doing a good job, continue yeah, to square up. Out of bounds, way to fight that off, Thomas. Thomas had an exciting match earlier in the day when he actually pinned Tyler Miller of Lakewood St. Edwards. Or Tyrell Miller, I'm sorry. This is an exciting match. Caught him in a near cradle. Thomas is hanging tough here. It's a minute 15 into the first period, no score. He hasn't taken many chances, but there he goes for a reach. Blaze turn in the corner. He seals that off with a wizard. Wrestling on the edge of the mat here, see if he can work his way out of bounds without giving up the two. Still got the shin wizard hanging in there. Not giving up the takedown. Does he have the up? Yep, yeah, covered the other ankle. Oh, he gave the two points. Yeah, covered that other ankle. Thomas was on his, on his hip. Tell me what you guys thought. I mean, at one point, the two-piece I thought was going to take off a couple years ago, and it never, I think everyone just kind of came back to the singlets. Yeah. Yeah, I think a couple teams kind of went all out on the two-piece uniforms, and other teams made it optional up to the individual wrestler. And now I think you're right. You don't, you don't see the two-piece, you know, mm -hmm. near as often as the singlet now. Heading into the second period here. Carson Thomas, bottom, escape, two to one. Blaze kicks him. We have a split screen here. Thomas and Blaze on the right. We have... Some women wrestlers. Yeah, we got Lexi Cincinnati. Fornchell from Lebanon. She's a good going against Jesse Jesse Fobar from Claremont Northeastern, CNE. So a couple Cincinnati area. Yep. Carson Thomas hanging in there. That's right. Keep it close, frustrate him, maybe have an opportunity or two to score, and capitalize. And that could be the difference. This would be a monumental upset, I believe, though, if you can make this happen. The ladies' match looks like it's 0 0 in the second period. So no oh, score out there. Out of bounds. Thomas, no takedown awarded. Still 2 to 1. Alexi of Fornshell from Lebanon fighting off, trying to fight off the bar arm, but it looks like she could not fight it off anymore, and now she is on her back. She's in trouble. She's in danger of getting pinned. And she did. There's the pin. She got C &E. pinned. Jesse Fogar, Batavia CME, with the winner by fall over Alexi Fornshell from Lebanon. That's interesting because last week those two met in the district finals with uh, Lexi Fornshell winning that winning that bout. So far I'm very impressed with Carson Thomas keeping this match close, Absolutely. two to one. He did get hit for stall warning. Goes out of bounds, 13 seconds left. There's a half shot attempt. Got to be careful because Blaze likes to hit that go behind real quick. And he got it there. Now he goes right into a tilt. Can't quite break 45 degrees on the back to get the near fall criteria. Green chooses bottom, up four to one. See what Thomas can do on top.
Thomas has got a good near cradle. We'll see if he tries hitting it here from standing position. Yeah, I was looking for it there. There oh, it is. Got a jump He's to it. Trying it, it oh. right there. Just gonna have to catch him by surprise. Carson Thomas keeping it tight, hoping for that chance to lock in that near cradle. And Thomas kicks him out, Joey Blaze gets the escape, so he's up five to one. Blaze trying to get a go behind. Carson hits Granby, but Blaze gets the takedown. There it is again. Granby but is not able to utilize the Granby to keep, keep himself from being taken down. Back to neutral position, Blaze on top 7-2. Going into a front headlock situation. He just keeps Carson's head down. Two takes his way around the corner. You got the two there? Yep. Lays up nine to two. Looking to let Carson Thomas have the escape so he can look to take, try and take another takedown. Nine to three, 35 seconds remaining. He's going to have to get going and go big. He has a five point move, a throw in his bag of tricks. He's going to need a six-point move. Well, I'm just throwing <laughs> and pin him. Or throw him, and you get the four back points. Drew Blaze likes that front headlock series. Trying to just jump over oh, top of yeah. him. I don't think that went as planned. Try to planned. get fancy. Right. Oh, well, he's having fun out there. Winning another state title, his third. Three-time state champ. Well, the takeaway for Carson is that, hey, I made it to the finals. I got two more years left. Going to come back and uh, be a two-time state champ. So he's got to look at it and keep working. Yeah, and he hung in there with the number one hung wrestler in at this weight class in the country. Absolutely. So he can wrestle with anybody. Weight Cross coverage of OHSAA Wrestling, made possible by SWOCA, the Southwest Ohio Wrestling Coaches Association, Klein Residential, Jeff Burkhoff, Old Coaches Association, Mark Flone of La Rosa's Cold Spring, Kentucky, Steve Burke, Friends of Operation Giveback. Kent Smith from State Farm. And Dr. Stephen Daly. So Tackett's was victorious over Miller 5-3 last week in the district final. See if Miller can change that around this week. Let's see what kind of game plan Eds came up with here. Score was five last week. Miller in the black and yellow. Tackett's in the black and gold. Which is which? Which is which? Well, Tackett's is in the red anklet and Miller on the green. If that helps you. No. Or look for the E. <laughs> there look we go, the there's e. the E. And Tackett's with the P on his chest. And guys, you don't see it often, but Miller has that compression shirt on under his singlet, you know? Yeah, I saw that earlier. I think his brother had the same shirt on. Not that exact same shirt, but same style shirt. Yeah, I didn't know you were allowed to do that unless it was for medical reasons. Um, that's what I thought also. Very official. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
it's really a little bit of a disadvantage because if you are on your back, you know, the referee really can't see your shoulder blades. You know, the t-shirt can cover it up um, and you can actually get pinned because it looks like your shoulder's down, but really it's just a t-shirt yeah. touching your shoulders really not down. It is a little chilly in here. He may have said, hey, yeah. I'm a little chilly. <laughs> I need to put a little shirt on. I guess that's his version of the two-piece. Good point. Tackett's in on the leg, on the edge, out of bounds. That's the end of the first period. Score not up, 0-0. Zero, zero. in a crab ride here. Tackett's trying to kick out. Keep it moving. Stalling warning on green. St. Edwards, one for stalling on top. Right, he was not moving up the body. Yeah, Got to move up. He was just hanging, hanging on the heel. Gets up. Let's see if he can finish getting out here. Looking for his hips, and he gets the escape. Tackett takes an early one nothing lead over Gerald Miller, St. Edwards. At this bracket, you know, there's most of the wrestlers here are juniors or seniors, and Miller just being a sophomore is pretty incredible. Right. Some of these uh, upper weights you normally see. Normally see uh, upperclassmen. All right. And he was a state finalist a year ago. Pretty incredible coming in. Who was the state finalist last year? Well, both of these guys were at different weight oh. classes. Miller at 157 pounds, Tackett's at 165 pounds, both moving up to 175 pounds this year. Well, we've said it over the years. These guys, you know, find a lot of success in junior high, and they're ready to compete for a state title as a, as a freshman. Tackett's actually lost to a St. Ed's wrestler a year ago. Final six to five, so a closely contested match. I'm sure he'd like to beat an Ed's wrestler this year. Let's see if Tackett's can ride him out for a full two minutes. He's got a minute 50 left. I got a feeling that's going to be difficult to do. Yeah, he's up pretty quick a lot of the time. Miller has been warned for stalling. Tackett gives up the escape to Miller. Tied at one apiece. Hope to see a little action here in the last minute 25. I think it's safe to say a takedown will win it at this point. See if they both kind of play it conservative or who's going to open up and make some attempts. There's a shot by Miller. Nice shot. Got to finish so it. finish it. So long, he's able to take that shot and grab it, and there's a warning on Tackett. Backing up, backing out of bounds. Nice pass to a shot, hips over, and there's. It's going to be. He's got to get that arm out of there. Got to get that right arm out. Nothing yet. 
Got the leg up again. Change off. Switches off to a double. Miller with great oh. hips. Oh, unbelievable, yep. There were multiple times Miller I thought he was going to finish off. that. Switched off to a double right but couldn't get that leg out. And then the hips came in. Almost capitalized. Right. Good job on the official being patient with that call. Another shot by Miller. 22 seconds remaining. Tactics has to be careful. Question is, are they going to be okay going to overtime? Just kind of. He's working those underhooks. Oh. He's in deep. Another shot. Time's going to run out. Ooh, close. Oh, so close to getting the takedown. One minute, sudden victory. Here we go. I think both the wrestlers have been one for stalling, so the next point wins. Oh, nice. Nice misdirection. Oh, Attack has touched the corner. Whoa, and they get that was quick. He gave the two, did he not? Why is he? Why the, no, he did not give the two. It, he called the two. two. He awarded the two. And then the match is over. Yeah, I don't know okay. why. Continued for. I thought that was a little quick. He still had his leg. Yeah, I didn't really see like, what I thought was a definitive I'd takedown. I'd like to see the replay on that. Yeah. Let's see what he does. He does a little misdirection. He cuts the corner. And he still has the leg. But I guess because he hooks that leg. But he has. Here we go. We're going to get. Ed's coach is going to ask for some clarification. Referee's discussing it. This might be overturned. We might have 50 seconds. Oh, no, we're going to stick with it. Yep. Not happy about that. Nope. Yeah, it appeared he had the leg. So. Yeah, he had that leg. Well, the champion, Miles Tackett's Perrysburg, 175 pound weight class in overtime. Takedown and Southern victory. Questionable takedown. Yep. No, well, we've seen a couple questionable takedowns <laughs> throughout the, throughout the uh, evening. So right there, he's got the leg in. Uh, so he's got the leg secured. He's under the left arm. And he still has the leg. Well, he's still got the leg. That's not really. Official? That, that, is a, that is a very difficult decision to call. Yeah, because if he squares up. Right. I mean, he could have let that go. Yeah, I think that needed to play left. out a little bit. Yeah. Needed more time. Right. It's a little quick. I don't know if he could see from his perspective that he had the leg right there. Nonetheless, the call stands, and Tackett's is a state champion. Capping off his senior season. And well, we Miller has two more years to come back and uh, win the thing. Yeah, or he could be the first time, four time runner up. He's already a two time runner up now. So, next up, we're going to be covering maybe a split screen. If we can uh, make that happen. So we're going to have the boys division one, 190 pound weight class of Wyatt Ferguson from Cincinnati Oak Hills, who is 45 and one on the year. He's going to be going against Camden McDaniel from Tees Valley, who is 41 and two on the year. And he is a two time state finalist on the girls division. It'll be the 170 pound weight class. Yeah, we're going to try to do a split screen with that if we can. Yeah, um, which would be Elizabeth Madison of Loveland, who is undefeated. Uh, I believe her record <clears throat> record is 
41 and 0. And she will be going against Rebecca Lodicon from Columbus to Sales, coming in with a record of 31 and 3, and also credentialed having been a three time state placer from Columbus to Sales. So, some good matches coming up here shortly. Now, we're going to have two Southwest Ohio wrestlers in, in the finals. So, we're going to have Liz, Elizabeth Madison from Loveland in the girls' division, and Wyatt Ferguson from Cincinnati Oak Girls in the boys' division. Yeah, I'm excited to watch Ferguson. He's come up to our Tuesday Night Live the last couple weeks, and man, he's tough. He is tough, tough, tough. It's interesting, he only has one loss on the season. Uh, he's going against an opponent that has two losses on the season. They're both seniors. His opponent is a two-time finalist. So this will be an interesting match. Yeah. It's anybody's, anybody's ball game. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Well, we've seen some awesome wrestling today. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. Incredible. I'm actually looking forward to seeing Elizabeth Madison you know, she is she's only a freshman. And when I heard she was 41 and 0, and I believe she has something like 35 pins. Yeah, it looks like if you look at the bracket, she's pinned her way to the finals. She's been pretty dominant all year. Uh, again, for a uh, for a first year high school wrestler. I'd like, she's to, I'd like to know boys. what her background is. Have you heard anything about her background? Was she? Uh... She's got three brothers that all wrestled for Loveland. Okay. Also. So she must have get, gotten pulled into some of those I'm brawls. Sure she have, did. Had to defend herself, I'm guessing. Yep. <laughs> so right now, we are waiting. There's actually an injury time in the Division Three finals match and they are wrapping up the wrestler's nose to stop the bleeding apparently it's been a been an issue the whole match so that would be let me see who that is 175 Division three, 175. Yep. Let's see who we have there, Lou. Our color commentary. <laughs> 173. 175, Division three. You want to know who's wrestling? Correct. So do I. You have to pull it on your, <laughs> on your, on your googly device. Oh, yeah. It's a good idea, technology. I think I got it here. There you go. Man, that internet thing's going to be a big deal someday. Oh, <laughs> uh, here Should we invest. go. So we have. Go ahead. We have. Here we go. Hayden Dickman <laughs> from from Archbold. He is. Let's see. He will be fifty and eight. Yeah, I'm not sure which singlet he is. Uh, he's going against Myers from. Liberty Center. Liberty Center. Liberty Center is in orange and black. And Dickman is Your attention in the blue and gold. Would a member of the coaching staff from St. Paris and Graham please report to the head table? A member of the coaching staff from St. Paris Graham please report to the head table. Let me just look here. They keep the venue nice and chilly, don't they? They yeah. do. Make getting, sure. getting ready to put the ice down. Yeah. So this match is continuing. Attention, There's been a lot of blood time. I know the wrestler Xander Myers has had quite a bit of blood time. His nose is taped up. So Dickman is blue and gold. Myers in the silver singlet. Come on, 
Yeah, we talked about it before. You wonder when you get your nose taped like that, you know, how it affects your breathing because you, probably all the breathing has to come in and out of your mouth. Right. It may also protect him from a cross face. Yeah. Can anything really protect you from a cross face? <laughs> But the oh, way, they're, I mean, the way I mean, they're taping it now, I mean, I think they said nose plugs aren't going to work. We're just going to tape yeah. tape up the whole nose. I saw a pretty mean cross face earlier today. The wrestler was team pointed for it. Or not team pointed, penalty pointed. I believe I saw that match, actually. Yeah, he was a little frustrated with the call. And ended up taking it out on his opponent. Samara's up 6-1. to one. Over Dickman of Archburg. Oh, he's on a headstand. Twenty-five seconds remain. Six to one lead for Myers. He's almost trying a freestyle move. Well, there was yeah. a returning state champ in this bracket, but it doesn't look like he's made it to the finals. Ethel. Six seconds left here. A little push off there. Dickman actually pinned a returning state champ to get to this position. Dickman with a little bit of a push off. Things are getting chippy. Things are getting chippy. He's going to try to go big here. Down by four. Two, one. Crowd excited about that win, awesome. Bloody awesome. nose and all. Yep, good for him. And your champion, Xander Myers from Liberty Center. All over the news uh, tomorrow will be uh, Eugene Harney. Hopefully Ferguson can be all over the news. Exactly. Needs That'd to win great. this uh, match coming up here. He's a junior, correct? He is. So he can repeat. How about that? So two again, we're going to try a split screen on the next two matches. Camden McDaniel out of Tees Valley. He's going to be going against a local favorite, Wyatt Ferguson from Cincinnati Oak Hills. And in the girls' division, we're going to have Elizabeth Madison from Loveland, who is currently undefeated, 41 and 0, going against three-time placer Rebecca Oladokun, Oladokun from Columbus to Sales. You know, we talked about Columbus to Sales. Um, Colin Palmer's making a big impact with that program. Yeah, it looks like they're going to end up being state runner-ups. Quite a few the sales wrestlers in Division II. It's definitely revitalized that program. Yeah. And how long has he coached there, just this season? No, it's been maybe two, three, okay. yeah, four years or so. On Matt four, the and he has a club. He had a, his own club and from took over the high school King program and himself. making a big impact. Yeah. From Archbold, Junior Wyatt Ripke. <laughs> On mat number three, the Division II Championship bout. From Tippin, Colombian, Senior Max Ray. Getting into some big boys now. Valley yep. Academy, senior 190 Kyle pounds. Snyder. Kyle Snyder's wrestling. On mat number two, the division one. Nazi Kyle Snyder. Oh, different Kyle Snyder. Spelled differently. Nashville, Tays Valley, Camden, McDaniel. Here's Wyatt Ferguson's From opponent. From Cincinnati, White Singlet. Senior Wyatt Ferguson. Let's go, Wyatt. And Wyatt also choosing to wear a white singlet. 
And on that one, the girls 170 pound championship match from Columbus St. Francis de Sales, senior Rebecca Oladuku. Wyatt Ferguson, obviously, in the OH for Oak Hills, White Sinlet, Preston, White Red, and Camden Madison. McDaniel from Tees Valley in the, the Valley seg Singlet with the one with the white. I was going to say Vikings, I can't tell. It does. It does, Vikings. So. Looks like it is, yep. We do have a split screen, so we do have Elizabeth Madison uh, from Loveland going against Rebecca Oladokun. Shout out to our spotter, Byron Keeling. Doing a great job. Getting the job. graphics up there. Doing a great job. Shout out to the, the cameramen and everybody involved in this production. If you watched the earlier matches this morning, there was some controlled chaos with all the Cincinnati wrestlers at different times on different mats. So Ferguson, red anklet, his opponent in the green anklet. And we have Madison in the black and orange, and her opponent in the purple. Elizabeth right. Madison fighting off the uh, front headlock. Ferguson had a very impressive district finals match last week, taking a commanding, jumped out to like a 10-0 lead real quick. A lot of offense, and then kind of coasted there on cruise control. Both got matches, some big moves. Both matches, no score yet. There we go. You mentioned um, our spotter, Byron Keeling, fighting off, not feeling well earlier today to fight through it. So he could be here with us. Right now, we have Elizabeth Madison. On top of Rebecca Holodokin. Looking for and, a pin there. Right, looking for the fall. I believe she has, of her wins, I believe she has about 95% are pins. Yeah, I thought the coach said she was 39-0 oh, with 39 pins. Coming into Maybe the Maybe it's 100%. There it and there it is right another there. Another pin. She's a freshman, right? She's a freshman. Undefeated right. season. Unbelievable. Impressive. And she just beat. A three-time state placer going for, well, a four-time state placer. Wow, congratulations, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Madison. Some injury time there after that match. Meanwhile, we're going to head back to the 190-pound weight class here. We have Wyatt Ferguson versus Camden McDaniel. Wyatt Ferguson in down position. Right now, the score is knotted at zeros. Daniel is a two-time runner-up, now three-time finalist. Wyatt Ferguson, first placement at the state tournament. I believe he was injured a year ago. He was unable to compete in the postseason. Well, he needs to get out of there, get out of the bottom, get up to his feet. Yep, score that crucial first point. Well, I got to say, uh you know, McDaniel is not doing a lot on top. I mean, he's pretty much riding hip to hip. He should be uh, getting hit for stalling here shortly. Kind of surprised it's taking this long, quite frankly. You know, depending on the ref, some refs let it go a lot there longer. There we go. There we go. One. Important escape. Fighting. Works inside control. We got 34 seconds left. Overtime struck and period. inadvertently got up, poked to the eye. Got his coach in the corner. You guys remember Gage Branson and Glenn Esty, head coach now at Oak Hills. Okay, I, I knew I had seen him somewhere before. Yeah. So he came from Glen Estee, huh? 
And the uh, assistant coach uh, is a Oak Hills wrestler. Former wrestler, Dylan Roth. So not a lot of action here. I mean, Wyatt Ferguson up one nothing. But again, he's wrestling a two-time finalist. There he goes, another Camden overtime. McDaniel. Now McDaniel's choice. Chooses bottom. As I would expect, down 1-0. Ferguson asking his coach if he should let him up. He, he does. does. He lets him up. Ties it up, 1-1. One one. Takedown will win it. Think when was the last time Oak Hills had a state champ? Good Jerry. question. It has been a while. Have they had one? Oh yes, okay. they have. I think Dave. I see they have one Dave back Schultz, in 1974. Back in was that Dave Schultz? The Dave Schultz? Was that who that was? I don't know. It doesn't tell me. Oh, okay. it just says 1974. Oh, McDaniel. McDaniel on a shot, but. Ferguson fights it off with the whizzer. Under one minute remaining in the match, one to one. Like in many matches, it's gonna come down to one takedown. Yeah, I think we're gonna see in about the last 30 seconds a flurry of action here. I don't think they're gonna to wanna to go to overtime. I could be wrong. Nice There's shot, shot. McDaniel. Got to keep that wizard. Keep that wizard. Everson is fighting it off. Keep that wizard. Nice, nice. Very Honestly, nice defense. Off. Oh, oh he's he's covered the hips. There's the takedown. 16 to go. Ferguson's got to get moving. Get a fresh start out of bounds. It's not over yet. Nope. He's got 14 seconds. That's plenty of time. Get one. Let's get a reversal. Or one and then two. Feels like an eternity for McDaniel. Oh, trying to catch the head. Okay. Almost does First it. One. Needs a takedown. Needs a quick takedown. Take down, win it. He's going to get a stall on McDaniel. That's a warning. Five seconds remaining. I think you could hit him again for stalling. You could if he, he backs up directly. Back. Which he's doing. Yeah, he is. He's got his skates on. That was about as even as they come as far as matches. Yeah. Right. McDaniel. Camden McDaniel, Tease Valley, your 190 pound state champion. Your Picked. Wyatt Ferguson of Oak Hills. Picked his spot, right time, right shot, a good finish. Wyatt Ferguson is going to continue his career at Davidson your attention next year. He'll be a good college wrestler. He has all the tools to do well in college. Championship teams and the runner-up teams in the team competition from this tournament. Please report to the whole Well, on the boys' side, Eugene Harney will be the hero of Cincinnati. Right. Here being her only state champ. Girls going very well. Perhaps a parade. Area. That'd be awesome. <laughs> parade, huh? <laughs> From downtown Sycamore. Downtown Sycamore. That's where I live. That's why I say that. Probably be a parade tomorrow for him, right? Down right. The, down yeah. the main street. Or, you know, give the uh, kids a day off. I mean, give sometimes schools, you know, if they have a state champion, we'll give the school a day off. I know St. Xavier, whenever they win a swimming championship, the whole school gets a day year. off. Tyler, right, so they get, about, they get about a day off a year for that. I'm sure he'll have a big welcome when he goes back to school and all of his classmates would be extremely happy for him. 215 Division One. 
In the finals, we have Dylan Russo from Olentangy Liberty coming in at 43 and three. He is defending state champion at 215, as well as having won the state championship at 220 the year before. He's gonna be going against Max Venadia from Brexville. Coming in, a senior coming in at a record of 43 and five. And he is a two-time state placer, finishing six both previous years. On at one, the girls 190-pound championship from Toledo Whitmer Jr. Savannah Isaac. Dylan Russo in the blue and silver singlet. Max Venadia. A lot in of talent. The dark red or maroon. A lot of talent at this weight class in uh, Ohio. Russo ranked top 10 in the country. And then on mat three from DeSales, Shulaw also ranked in the top 10, I believe, in the country at this weight. Maybe we should have those two wrestling. That would be cool. See if they want to after this. Right. Give the people what they want. Maybe get the camera crew to video that. Yep. All, all six of these guys at Vision 1, 2, and 3 are built very, very well. You know, a lot, right. of, lot of time in the gym, a lot of time in the weight room. Very solid 215 pound, you know, um, weight class this year in Ohio. Absolutely. Canadia, that's a common name from the Brexville area. There's been a few, a few years ago. I believe was a state champ, now wrestling at Purdue. There's also a, a younger Venadia that wrestled at 175 pounds. I wonder how tall he is. I mean, he is tall. Russo with the takedown, two point lead. You know, in today's world, these two 15-pounders are moving as quick as some of the lightweights. Yeah, absolutely. And that's uh, that's how you win a championship, being quick on your feet and very athletic at this weight. Not to mention strength. Yep, <laughs> yep. Dylan Russo on top. Running a little bit hip to hip, he's probably going to get hit for stone, or somebody will. Max Venadia needs to try to base up. The time runs out before that happens. Easier said than done when you got all that weight on top of your right. head. Stick 215 pounds on your backpack and see what happens. People don't realize that. Unless you wrestled, you don't realize how hard it is to get out. Yeah. I got dad, you know, saying, my son can't get out from the bottom. And I tell him it's very hard to get out from the bottom. Right. Yeah. I always liken it to, like I said, like strapping. You know, if you're 215 pound weight class, 215 pounds in your back. You know, and you're trying to push up out of it. Yeah, yep. Dylan Russo currently up 3-0, second period. Got a minute 20 left in the second period. We're going back to the awards, I like the feeling that they're keeping them to the end because look at the stands, no one is left. Right. They're all staying around, obviously, to see their wrestler on the podium and taking pictures and so forth. Yeah, and I think they're doing right by the upper weights. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, nice there. shot. Nice high crush. See if we can finish it. Dylan Russo, and he does. I'm curious to know where he's going to be wrestling next year. Is he going to Ohio State? Staying local? I haven't heard. 
with his resume, I'm sure he has his pick. I'm sure he does. Right now, running tight. He's got the leg locked in. Looking to power half. Loud noise coming from Matt Three. A pin there. Columbus to sales, got the pin on that three. <clears throat> All right, moving into the third period. Dylan Russo up five, nothing over Max Vanadia from Brechtville. Uh, Max chooses neutral. This looked like he had a chokehold on him. Here come for that tie. Vanadia, see if he goes for a throw, being down by five. Yeah, he's going to have to go. He's going to have to go big. Russo's never been in any kind of trouble. He's been in complete control this match. Yes, he has. Just stays in good position at all times. Nice hand fighting. Attempting a shot. Dylan Russo kind of hanging heavy on Max's head in on the low single. Let's see if he see if he can finish this. Well, that was a nice low single. He's just got to finish that. Back door. Very nice low single for a big guy to shoot Absolutely. that quick. Pipes it down. Trying to cover here. He does cover. He gets the two takedown and maybe he can score some back points here. Uh, but is not able to secure back points, at least not yet. We have 25 seconds left in the match. Dylan Russo in complete control here. We're barring something you know, dramatic happening. Looks like he's locked up the state title. It's third. It's third state title. He is third. Yeah. And again, he could have been a four timer. That had been for COVID year. Good for him. The champion, Dylan yeah. Russo. Three time state champion. That's right. Another day at the office. Yeah. The cheering you hear is the takedown occurred in the Division Three Finals at 2:15 right as the whistle blew to take the match into overtime. Now the match is over in overtime, takedown secured. Was that a duck under by a 215 pounder? <laughs> nice duck under. All right, well the match we've all been waiting for. 285 pound. It used to be called heavyweight, but now it's 285. Nowadays, heavyweights have to cut a little weight if you know they're right. over 285. I remember back in the day when heavyweight was unlimited. It truly was heavyweight. There was no weight limit. Information that was handed out to all of the. I remember Vernon Brodnax weighing in at 425 pounds. No. Yes. We had a 410 in uh, my senior year in Pennsylvania. In the finals, in the yep. six, seven, four, ten. Yeah, it just doesn't seem fair. Well, it just kind of became dangerous when you had that type of disparity. I mean, somebody's 200 pounds heavier than you. 
yeah, you wouldn't let a 106 pounder wrestle a 300 pounder. <laughs> and in my day, it was 185 then heavyweight. So Great. you could be 185.1 wrestling heavyweight, wow. and there could be a couple hundred pound difference. Jerry, you'd be in the heavyweight division. <laughs> Expeditiously with the awards. Well, hey, I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm working on it. Here they are, the final matches. Our boys final the matches of the night. All right. So at 285, we have Aiden Fockler from Maslon Perry. He is a finalist and a third place, so two time state placer. And he's going to go against Aaron Reese of Wadsworth, who is a one time state placer. So it should be interesting. I don't know if they met last week in the uh, Hoover district or not. But they're both out of the Hoover district. Yeah, and both these guys are juniors, so they're coming back next year. Two did not meet last week. Bachler was on the other side of the bracket. Reese on lost in the semis one, to Andrews of Barberton. Bachler won the district title. From the Andrews. Minerva, senior Elena Jackson. Bachler was the one that beat the Moeller wrestler in the semis ah. last night. Yeah, he's pretty athletic also, especially for a you know, 285 pounder. And they're off. I like this. I like watching more aggressive, you know, 285 pound wrestlers. He's got a lot of forward pressure. And he moves. There's another one of those dry fit shirts under the singlet. Bachler keeps this pressure up. I think Reese is going to get hit with stalling shortly. This early in the match. He's trying to throw. Oh. See if he gets it. Or a body lock. Yep. He rocked him off. No stall warning yet. Underhook there. This Fockler. Reese breaks away. That's a nice attempt at a drag. But I would say Fockler is definitely the aggressor. Yes, he is. Yeah. Keeping the pressure on. Yeah, I'm a little surprised Reese hasn't been hit for stalling right. yet, but I do feel like sometimes the refs as they're not supposed to, but don't always call stalling on the big guys as quickly as they might on the, the smaller wrestlers. I would agree with that. And about 20 seconds left and no score. It's a nice snatch single, but Reese doing a good job defending it. Is that a Central Michigan sticker on Fockler's helmet is it, or his headgear? Looks like a C. Hmm. I wonder if he's committing there. Fockler's choice, he chooses bottom. Get the all important first point. I'd like to see a little bit more uh, action from the neutral position. Yeah. Well, 
Falker's giving us a lot of action. It's just Reese is right. defending. I think the referees have to force, force the issue a little bit. The stall calls. Falker gets that escape, making it one nothing. A little bit of grinding of the heads here. You notice that? Yeah. It's that leg snatch that again. Slow. And now he's got, there we go. There's the first one. I just think he's got to get a little bit lower. He's, he's reaching for the thigh versus behind the knee. Yeah. Well, he's getting to it on that snatch, but Reese just has tree trunks. Yep, yep. He's able to get his foot back to the mat. I'm sure these two have met several times this year, I would guess. Now Reese with some forward pressure, but Fockler turns, forces him out. 56 seconds remaining in the second period. Wrestlers just kind of hanging heavy on the head, trying to wear the other one down. Falco looking for a possible knee pick. Just looking for some action, need a little more action, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> a little more action. Well, Fokker was supplying it early. He's kind of slowing down now. Maybe that was Reese's game plan, yeah, you know, rope-a-dope. Let him wear himself out, and then yep. he's going to attack late. Absolutely. But again, I'm surprised he's only been worn once. For stalling, he hasn't made any attempts right. to score in any position. No shot, nothing. Nothing. And they're letting him get away with it. That's going to be interesting to see um, Aiden Fokker. I don't know how he is top position. There's definitely a size discrepancy between the two. Yeah, there is, yep. There we go, 1-1. One, one. Let's hope it's not another minute and a half worth of yeah. hanging on each head other. Head to head. Getting to the point where the ref almost doesn't want to make that call, although he should at right. some point. He doesn't want to decide the match. Well, sometimes it it helps to hit him with stalling, and then it helps them decide the match. Yeah, makes them open up a little bit more. Right. You know, neither one wants to make a mistake, so this is likely going to go to overtime. And first point scored in one minute. Yeah, I could easily uh, see since this, this might down. earn him a stall point if Fockler continues to push the pace here. Trying to, get, double unders. Trying to get under. Uh, oh, see, he keeps that. He needs to keep attacking, keep, keep that pressure. Right, keep pummeling inside. He'll earn that stall call. He's got 45 seconds. Again, Reese has not made one single attempt. That was maybe the first, that little. Half grab. Coming down the last 25 seconds here. At this point, I'd be very surprised if, we, if they were to call it. Oh, there was an attempt. Yeah, they're not going to call it. They're not. <laughs> Well, he made that attempt there, so he looked like he was working. We're going to get a sudden victory, one minute on the clock. Yeah, you called it, Jerry. We're going to win overtime here. I mean, unless unless they hit uh, Aaron Reese for, for stalling here, 
I'd be surprised to see a takedown. Yeah. Both hanging on the head. Think they're trying to push the issue. Uh-oh. What are we going to call here? Blood time, probably. Is that what? I think he's going to have a talking to blood yep, time. Blood time. I think he had a couple words for the physicality of the, is there a headbutt or a hard? Yeah, one of them's going to have to take a risk here. If not, we're going to have uh, an escape and an escape and then go in the, right. a second overtime, right? We could come down all the way to the ultimate tiebreaker. Ultimate tiebreaker. Ride or die. They just want to close out this 2023 20, state championship. All eyes on them. That is. It's overtime on mat three as right. well. Overtime. Yep. One to one. Very Obviously. similar matches going on. Sudden victory. Overtime. Here we go. Boys are scuffling. It's 35 seconds left in this match. In overtime, the first period of overtime. It was not a sudden, sudden victory. Now Reese is pressuring forward. He's probably been conserving his energy. Yep. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and now he's... he's there he comes. Maybe he goes. Oh, oh. Exposing himself a little bit there. He's able to rebound. Oh. Got it locked up. Going for the body lock. See if he can try and do something with it. And now we're going into the next phase of overtime, which will be each wrestler will have 30 seconds. Um, the scoring of the match will continue. And one wrestler will take down. And then the next 30 seconds, the other wrestler will take down. And if it's still tied after that, the wrestler who scored first we get his choice of either top or bottom, and if he gets away, he wins. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a, a bit of a lengthy one. Yeah, no one's willing to take a shot. No. No. I think they're... Uh, okay, so Aiden Fockler got the first point, correct? He yep. did, an escape. So if you think about it, and this goes to the well, ultimate tiebreaker, ride, ride or die. He's probably going to take bottom, right? Yep. Or if he can ride him out here. Well, he was not able to ride him out very long earlier in the match. You're right. If he could ride him out here for 30 steps. Oh, wow, that was oh. quick. Yeah. Reese. Cat-like reflexes. Definitely some headbutting going on. I you can definitely see some headbutting going on here. Oh, yeah. I gave the point to the wrong, wrong guy. It should be two to two. Right. We got the score correct on ours. Yep, they did. got it wrong. And Not here we go. Let's ride or die. It's choice. This is First the state title. Means choice. We need to change that score. He chooses down. So again, 30 seconds here. Clock will be set to 30 seconds. Aiden Fockler is down. If he gets away in 30 seconds, he wins. If not, he loses. And Aaron Reese then becomes the, the state champion. I think he's going to get out. I Nothing like makes me believe he won't. I, I don't know. I, I saw Reese suddenly move fast <laughs> at, you know, at the end of that last period, you know, where he got that escape. Yeah. And he does have the size difference. Yeah. He can get that weight so on. So I don't know. This would be interesting. It's going to come down to this start. Right. He's up. Ooh, he's got to just this kick away. Oh, he's out. He's out. There it is. Yep. You guys called it. Came down to that. Your 285-pound champion from Massillon Perry, Aiden Fockler. With that, I believe we're going to be wrapping up. And so I'm Jerry Tischler. I'm Don Jones. And Lou Carraher. We just want to say thank you for tuning in. Um, it's been a great uh, championship series here at the Schottenstein Center at beautiful Ohio State campus. 
with the Ohio High School State Wrestling Championships. Thank you, and we hope to see you again next year. See you guys next year. Great cross coverage of OHSAA Wrestling, made possible by SWOCA, the Southwest Ohio Wrestling Coaches Association, Klein Residential, Jeff Burkoff, Old Coaches Association, Mark Flon of La Rosa's Cold Spring, Kentucky, Steve Burke, Friends of Operation Giveback. Kent Smith from State Farm. And Dr. Stephen Daly.